and a blue-collar mentality. At the University of Kentucky, anything is possible. It's the people who make it home. Big Blue Nation is roaring. The party has started. Kentucky earning respect with every snap. We specifically tailor what we do, not only to the football athlete, but to each position. We build a foundation in three to four years of training that wherever you go, all you're gonna do is fine tune the aspects of your training that we've you know, brought you through over the course of your career here. Here at Kentucky, we pride ourselves on taking care of the student athlete as a whole. We want to help take care of their bodies and their minds to get them to where they want to be in life. Our program's very individualized in terms of finding a specific plan for each individual athlete so that they can find academic success. We have a 24-7 fueling zone here available to the athletes. It's always fully stocked with fresh foods. If you do the work on the field, our group of communicators, marketing, PR people, video people, photographers, all of us together, we're going to figure out a way to make sure that you become the best player you can be off the field. What we strive to do is just build men of you know, competence, character, and uh, guys who are going to be ready for consequence. Being able to serve a purpose, not just being a football player, it making me more cognizant of my decisions of anything that I do. You are building a brand that is worth something. Find somebody you can relate to. Find somebody that's speaking life into you. I seen the vision that, that Coach Stoops had, and I wanted to be a part of that vision. Respect I have for that man as a person, as a coach, and as just a human being, you know, he's just awesome to be around. We look at it as a whole person development. How specifically will you alter your habits to help you overcome deficiencies? The opportunity is yours. On the field, in the community, in the classroom. When people ask why Kentucky, we say, why not? Well, rise and shine. It feels like Santa's been here, and that's because we are about to put a big blue bow on this 2020 recruiting class as the early signing period begins and those letters of intent come rolling in like St. Nick's sleigh. Welcome into the live signing day show inside the war room in uh, Christy Thomas alongside Lee K. Howard. Lee K., thanks for joining us this year. Yeah. Glad to have you. It's great to be here. I'm glad you used the analogy of Christmas because it kind of feels like Christmas Day in some ways for this coaching staff. They've been working really hard, especially since that Louisville win. They've been trying to get that class all signed, sealed, and delivered, and this is like a Christmas Day. A couple of years ago, we looked forward to that February date, Yep. but now with this early signing period, everybody's looking forward to this date in December, trying to get that class pretty much put all together, and that's what we're going to find out today. Yeah, a ton of excitement about this class. Could, by the time we're done uh, with this, it goes the 18th through the 20th of December. By the time we're done with this, this could be one of Mark Stoops' best classes yet. Certainly trending that way, and yep. we've seen how Coach Mark Stoops Stoops and Vince Merrow and the other assistant coaches have been able to recruit and develop these guys and today the fans are going to get a chance to learn some of their names some of them they're very familiar with already and they're going to get to see what the future of Kentucky football looks like yeah. and I can tell you this it looks very bright. Oh, it's good. Yeah, that's right. All right. Well, we've got you covered from all angles. Of course, we've got our big board here, so we're going to tell you as letters come in, we're going to let you know who's on the board and who's in. We're also going to uh, go to the interview set. We've got Dick Gabriel and Dusty Bonner who are going to interview a lot of people, and then we've got Jeremy Jarman in the film room, really going to break things down and really go next level. But um, I have to think as we're getting ready for the Belk Bowl and we turn our attention to that, there is so much going on in the month of December for this uh, this group of coaches, but there's so much excitement in this room. We're in the war room. In inside Kroger Field, uh, part of the recruiting room here. Yes. It's awesome. I mean, such a great vibe in here, right? Yeah, nobody can see off the camera right now, but if yeah. you looked over this way, you'd see lots and lots of people working. The coaches are on the phones. The uh, yeah. sports information <laughs> people are over here. I mean, there's a lot going on in this room, and we're going to bring it all to you first right here on the, on this webcast. Absolutely. All right, so let's go to check in with everybody. We'll let them all introduce your, themselves to you and tell you what they're going to be doing as we go throughout the morning. So let's head over first to Jeremy Jarman in the film room. Hey guys, it's Jeremy Jarman with UK Sports Network. 
right now I'm sitting here by myself, but here in a few minutes I'm going to be joined by uh, some of the different coaches. We're going to sit down. We're going to break down uh, two to three plays on each player as the commitments come in. Uh, we're going to kind of look at their baseline, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of their development and things like that once they hit campus and just kind of give you a glimpse of the future. So uh, now I'm going to kick it over to Dick Gabriel. He's going to take it, and he's going to tell you what he's going to be doing for us today. Thank you, Mr. Jarman. I am here with Dusty Bonner, former SEC passing leader, and it wasn't that long ago you were sending in your letter of intent on a day like today. And obviously the thing to do is to recruit to need, and it looks like they've done a pretty good job. Yeah, they have. They've, they've gotten a lot of players across the board, filling some spots where they need. Uh, as always, you know, you try to add, add quarterbacks to the mix, got a couple quarterbacks. That's not uncommon. Uh, this year proved to us, you know, the reasons why you do that. <laughs> That's right. Well, as Chrissy said, we're going to be talking to a lot of people, players and coaches today. And like Christmas morning, everybody's happy, Christy. So we're looking forward to getting the remarks from these coaches who have worked so hard. All right, should be good. Now, we want you to interact with us, so all you have to do is use this hashtag, Vision2020. We may use some of your tweets here on our uh, live broadcast, but we want to hear what you think about it, and you tell us about it, holler at us, tell us. Listen, a couple times we've seen people all over the world are watching this and watching us because they're just as excited as we are, so be sure to use that hashtag. But, all right, as Dick mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, and Dusty, quarterbacks, that yes. was important uh, this year, so let's take a look at the big board. You'll see who's already in, so uh, a couple of players that are already in, uh, you can tell Lee Kay, tell them who we've got. Yeah, so far, uh, Bo Allen, the quarterback out of Lexington Catholic, is in. John Young, uh, that was one of the prize guys that committed early. He's yep. in right now. DeAndre Buford, Ernest Sanders, uh, Derek Jackson, uh, Joey Gatewood, Ricky Hyatt Jr., and Carrington Valentine. And, and you can bet that board will continue oh, to yes. grow as, as we go. But quarterback was a big issue, and, and Dusty just kind of alluded to it. We found out this year why quarterback <laughs> yes. was – it's it's a position that you want to have some depth in, and, and they're bringing in two guys in this class that can really, really uh, project well in the future of this football program. Which makes perfect sense. Terry Wilson and Sawyer Smith will be seniors, so you've right. got to backfill that. So, all right, let's talk about them. First of all, let's go with Bo Allen. This is a legacy recruit. Yes. He's 6'2", 200 pounds at a Lexington Catholic High School. I say he's legacy. That's because his dad, Bill, played at UK for Jerry Claybird from 1985 to 88. So tell us what we know about this kid. You know, of all the kids, this is the one that I probably saw in person uh, the most. Right. Yes. Uh, of course, being a kid right here, literally in your backyard. And, and this is a guy you got to get. When you've got a talent like Bo Allen in your city, you've got to lock him up and give the coaching staff a lot of credit for doing exactly that with Bo Allen. He's a guy, he's a pro style quarterback. He, he likes to drop back and pass the ball. At least at the high school level, though, he showed his ability to run the ball. He can run the ball a little bit as well. Really, really nice kid. Uh, spoke to him several times. Uh, not the most outspoken kid, not the loudest kid, but you can tell he's got those leadership abilities, and he's a guy that people will follow. People yes. will follow uh, Bo Allen, and uh, you know it's, it's always easy to see a recruiter uh, like him. He's, he's a guy who started to help out with with John Young to put this class together. So Bo Allen, certainly a big piece of this class. A four star by rivals and ESPN just announced that he was the Paul Hornig Award winner yes. for the best player in the state of Kentucky. Listen to this, finished his high school career with nearly 12,000 yards and 127 TDs. It's not bad. The kid can play. There's yes. no doubt about that. All right, so now let's move on then to Joey Gatewood. Uh, he's a dual threat kind of quarterback. Mm -hmm. This guy will be an early enrollee and he's a transfer from Auburn. Yeah, he is. And, and you know, early on coming out of high school, this kid was compared a lot to Cam Newton. I yeah. think part of that was he was going to Auburn, but but he is a really, really talented guy. And, and for Stoops and this staff to land Joey Gatewood, that was a huge feather in their cap. Six foot five, 237 pounds, uh, top 50 prospect out of high school, uh, highest rated quarterback since Tim Couch decided to come to Kentucky. So, I mean, you're talking about a guy with elite talent. Uh, he's, he's a runner first at this point, but, you know, he's got a lot of talent. He's not only that. So I think the appeal for him to come to Kentucky, I think especially yeah. after what he saw Lynn Bowden was able to do, sure. uh, I think there was a lot of appeal for Joey Gatewood to come to the Wildcats. Red shirt of the 2018 season at Auburn after appearing in one game. Um, he will uh, be, as I mentioned, be an early enrollee, and then he'll have mm -hmm. two years remaining when he gets here. So two really good gets for the University of Kentucky, and somebody that will know a thing or two about these quarterbacks is standing by now with Jeremy Jarman. They, they spread it out and throw it all over the place. Where are we going right now? Hey, uh, I'm sitting here with our quarterback coach, Darren Henshaw. Coach, how are you doing? Good, Jeremy. Great day today. It is a good day. So we're sitting here, we're looking at a uh, big time local standout, Bo Allen. Uh, we got a couple clips here for him. Uh, 
So let's let the tape begin and just tell me what kind of stands out to you as just play roles. Well, the one thing with Bo is his accuracy down the field is he's got a quick release, gets the ball out very, very fast, and he's again accurate down the field. His deep ball is very, very good. As you can see right here, he does, he does a great job of giving what we call it opportunity balls to his receivers. He threw for over 11,000 yards in high school in his career. He's had a lot of snaps. He started as a freshman. Uh, so he's, again, he's going to be a guy that's going to come in here in January and compete right away. Yeah, I see here, he, you know, his ability to just kind of focus in. Uh, obviously, he gets hit later on this, but he has to bend down, you know, to get to this ball. Obviously, not ideal placement. It looks like he's able to look outside and get some of those defenders to bite down and, like you said, put the ball right on the money. Yeah, he does a very good job with his feet. You know, we were, we had him in camp. Uh, every year and you could just see with his footwork and with his motion he gets it out quick and his vision down the field is again he's very accurate down the field. Any similarities between what you see from him in high school having watched him over the past few years and what you ask our quarterbacks to do? Well you know in in the pocket he does such a good job of he, he can escape he can do everything that we need him to do as far as being able to read defenses and again we're going to do whatever we got to do to go win games, but this guy can throw it. He's got a natural release, um, and again, he's had a lot of snaps at quarterback in high school, and again, he's going to be ready to go in January. Good deal. So we'll obviously be talking about Bo throughout the rest of the day and obviously the rest of this uh, bowl season and up until his early uh, enrollment at the University of Kentucky. But next, let's switch over to Joey Gatewood. Uh, let's talk about him. Let's talk about some of his intangibles. What do you see from him? Um, you know, in these couple clips that you've chosen here? Well, I'll tell you, you can see right here just with his, again, huge quarterback, 6'5", 240 pounds, can move really good. And you can see, he can see down the field, his vision. He has great escapability. Again, big, powerful, fast quarterback. And you can see down the field, he, he can throw the football. He just flicks it and it goes right there about 60 yards. So. Um, you know, and then you see his running ability. My goodness. For a guy that's 6'5", 240 pounds and can move like this, his <laughs> quickness, it's, it's pretty darn impressive. So, you know, he was a guy that, uh, you know, that committed early out of high school, really didn't, really didn't, uh, you know, get recruited and stuck, stuck with Auburn through his commitment. But we're, we're ecstatic to get him uh, and get him here. He'll be here in January also. Uh, and again, this kid can do it all. I mean, just looking at this, this, this is a deep, as a former defense alignment, this, this is a nightmare to see a guy like this that has this kind of vision, escapability. Look at the shake there. And then watch the speed. He can take off and he can <laughs> run. And now he's just pulling away from people. Yeah. And again, both these quarterbacks have great character. We're, we're so excited about getting them both. That is awesome. So they're both coming in in January. Talk about that process for these guys. You know, what, what can they expect on, you know, day one coming in? Well, they'll come in in January. And again, we're, the first thing we're going to do is, is make sure they get acclimated to being at Kentucky. And uh, after that, we're going to start diving into the playbook, uh, you know, and, and again, that the knowledge, again, being able to go through all our installs, one through five, understanding what they are. And then again, in February, we're going to be grinding. You know, it's, it, it's going to be a situation where we got to get ready because March spring football is happening. What do you think it is about this offense, Coach, that makes these two elite football players, two quarterbacks, come in, want to battle, uh, have the opportunity to come here to the University of Kentucky, develop under you? Um, I mean, clearly, I mean, this, this looks like it's easily going to be the best quarterback room that the University of Kentucky has had probably in our program history. You know, it's really exciting. And again, you can see with our offense, we're going to do what the best thing for what that quarterback is that's playing. Obviously, we've got Lynn at quarterback right now. We're doing what, what he needs to do to be successful. We're going to do what, when Joey's at quarterback, we're going to do what he does to be successful. When Bo's at quarterback, we're going to do what he needs to be to be successful. So again, through that process, we're going to continue to do whatever we need to do to go win football games. That's really interesting to me because you hear so much about players being system quarterbacks and what we've seen, you know, from your quarterbacks uh, over the past few years is we've seen that ability to adjust to players and adjust to their playing style. 
and uh, that definitely speaks volumes. I, I think it's pretty easy if I'm a quarterback to see how the play calling, to see how uh, you know the coaching has evolved with each player at that position. So congrats on getting these two young men coaching. I look forward to watching them progress under you. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, we're going to kick it over to Dick Gabriel and see what he has in store for us. Thanks, Jeremy. What we have is the head coach, Mark Stoops, and I can tell you they aren't resting yet. He, you haven't been off that phone since you sat down. That's part of the process, isn't it? Yeah, it's part of it. It's going to be a long day today, but, good, uh, but uh, it's off to a great start. Uh, we feel really good about this class. Obviously, the guys that are in already, you could build a team around the guys that are in right now. <laughs> Uh, but we are waiting uh, for quite a few signatures throughout the day. It'll be, I think, a little longer day than normal for us. It, it always starts real early. Uh, we get off to a hot start. We got some guys that have been in the boat, so to speak, for a long time that we know are extremely solid and, and ready to sign. Um, but there's uh, some big time guys that we're going to go on today all the way till you know, 3, 30, 4 o'clock this afternoon. As long as you have to. And then tomorrow, you know, so uh, as long as we have to, to go, but we'll continue to to battle and uh, try to sign as many as we can. Right. Coach, four bowl games in a row. How does that translate into the living room when you're going in and talking to these families and these kids? Well, I think it, it, it's a it's a big deal because what these guys know is, is, is that we have a great program and we've been very solid for four years running right now. And uh, they're used to us going to bowl games and that's what they grow up seeing. Um, and you could see that uh, helping us on the recruiting trail and uh, teams look at us as a winning program and uh, a program that's continuing to rise and uh, it's evident with the way we're recruiting here this year. It's interesting you say growing up because when you think about the teams you follow, that I followed, that Dusty followed, as we were growing up it becomes embedded in your brain that's a good football school and now that's your brand. Yeah without a doubt like I said our, uh, these guys that we're signing are, since they've been in high school they're used to us going to a bowl game every year used to us battling and and winning games in the SEC and uh, holding our own and uh, and they know we're interested in taking it to a whole nother level. We're going to talk about everybody by the time the day's over but let's start with the quarterbacks you, you recruited two you literally watched Bo Allen grow up and then Joey Gatewood becomes available. Two yeah. different styles, and yet they both would will work for you, won't they? Well, without a doubt, um, they, they are different styles, but both are just great competitors. Right. You know, Bo, um, we've been recruiting Bo for for four years now, and um, you know, and just got to know him and his family so well, and uh, he does such a good job. Um, you know, he's a fantastic football player, great competitor, um, good and, program, and great program, and uh, you know, we're we're really honored to have Bo in our program. He, we've been targeting him for a long time. Joey is a unique situation. Anytime you go into a transfer, um, it's different. And, um, you know, when he came available, you know, you're sitting there looking at him and the way he plays and uh, how good of a football player he is uh, in what we're doing right now and the style of play that we're, we're running with right now. He fits right in. And, uh, I mean, he's, he's a big old dude now. He's a big monster and a, a, a very talented player. So, um, again, very fortunate to bring him into the fold. Coach, you got to like these guys that, are, that, are, that have this much success, but they welcome the competition. They want to walk in the room. They, they know there's other guys that are going to come here, that are going to be here, that are going to be great competition to compete against, to get on that field. But you got to love the guys that instead of shying away from it, that's what they want. Well, that's exactly right. And you could start right there with the quarterbacks because we were talking about them. But those are two guys right there that uh, they want to have great teammates around them. They want to come in and compete and have an opportunity to win. And they both are winners. Um, but they, uh, but, but, but each of them welcomed the other. And uh, that, that's what it's all about because they know ultimately it's up to them individually. If uh, you take care of your business and go out and perform, uh, then good things are going to happen. And, and you can see that throughout this class because uh, we're, we're getting deeper and deeper. And um, it's good to have guys that are uh, willing to compete and come in and fight for their position. Coach, thanks for stopping by. We will visit with you a little later when your list is longer. Okay. All right. Get back on that phone. Sounds good. Thank see you. you. Thank you, okay. Coach. Send it back over to Christy and Lee Kay. All right, lots of things are busy around here, as is yes. Twitter. All right, so you can talk to us on uh, hashtag Vision2020, but we got some folks, uh, some tweets rolling in. Yeah, Matty Hall was the first one, says uh, NSD2020, finally here. Excited to see UK football sign some big-time players and 
hopefully a top 15 to 20 ranked class. We don't know the rankings yet, but we've seen no matter what those rankings are, Kentucky football has been able to develop some of those guys like Josh Allen or Calvin Taylor that comes in as, as low stars and, and they're able to, uh, to uh, really project really well. All right, Boomer. Uh, says it's the most wonderful day of the year. I agree, Boomer. How about that? I agree. National Signing Day, let's roll the dice, UK football. Uh, like the enthusiasm from Boomer. And we have, a, I think, one more tweet here from Ryan Bruner. Let's get this day rolling. Yeah. How about it's that? Roll oh, it's rolling, and I'll tell you why. We got a couple more coming in on the big board. Let's tell you about this. You're going to see this class be very heavy on linemen, offensive and defensive linemen. Um, as we were kind of talking about this yesterday, we always want a bunch of defensive linemen, right? right. You're always going to bring in as many of those as you can. From the offensive line perspective, this class is loaded. This is really looking to, to shape up to be a really, really good offensive line class for the future here. We mentioned to you earlier, John Young and DeAndre Buford are in, but we just got in Jeremy Flax. Um, we also got in RJ, RJ Adams. Adams. And then uh, Jaton McLean, running back. We'll tell you a little bit about all of these guys, but let's talk about this offensive line because mm -hmm. this is really going to be um, a fin really, really fun to watch. We've seen the yes. big blue wall develop over uh, the years with John Schlarman and what a great job he's done. Uh, they're losing um, a lot on offensive line, so you've got to replace a lot. So this kid here, though, John Young, 6'7", 290, out of Louisville Christian Academy, was the very first signee for this class. But what a get this was to get him out of Louisville, steal him away. Yes, I mean, this was a, the, top, the number four ranked player in the state by a lot of the recruiting services. John Young was the guy, like you said, first on board for the Wildcats. And he really started the torch, taking the torch around the state and around the country and saying, hey, come join me. Come join me with what we're doing here at Kentucky. Uh, he's a guy that's really developed as a leader, like yep. you said, out of Christian Academy. He had, he had a lot of huge offers. I mean, he's huge. an in-state kid, but he could have easily gone anywhere else in the country, but chose to stay home and uh, and make the short drive to Lexington yeah. to become a Wildcat. So you got to enjoy John Young and, and what he's going to bring to this football program. You mentioned uh, the offensive line. John Schlarman likes to play a lot of offensive linemen. So it's always good to kind of restock that group, and, and he's certainly done that again today. No doubt. When the line on him, great size and frame, balance and coordination, moves defenders easily and plays hard, got some great tools, even being tossed around as, with, could be like a Logan Stenberg, Luke Fortner. I mean, listen, the sky's yeah, the limit great, there for this kid. Great size. I yeah. mean, he, he's, a, he's a tall kid, kind of like, like a Landon Young. Yes. Uh, you, you kind of compare him in that way. There you go. All right, so now DeAndre Buford, 6'5", 285, out of Martin Luther King High School in Detroit. Kentucky was really getting it done in Michigan. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you've seen this coaching staff really recruit the state of Ohio since yes. they arrived here. I think they're all becoming Michigan men in some <laughs> ways, too. They're, they're really going after the state of Michigan, and we're going to talk about several of those guys out of that state coming up uh, throughout the rest of the day. But uh, as far as DeAndre, Andre Buford is concerned, four-star guy, uh, really high ceiling on this guy. Um, you know, kind of the reports on him needs to put on a little bit of weight, but he's got the body frame, the body structure to do so. Great pass protector. Uh, I think DeAndre Buford is, is a big get for the Wildcats. This is an early enrollee for Kentucky as well. A four-star according to two, uh, 247 Sports. They ranked him as the number 24 tackle and the number seven prospect out of Michigan. You're going to hear this as a recurring theme that these guys turned down offers from really big schools as well. So he's no exception. Turned down offers from Missouri. Pitt, Auburn, LSU, Tennessee, um, but potential here is again with these guys is off the charts. So, right. and and then moving on to another guy out of Michigan, Jeremy Flax, six six three twenty. Speaking of size, he's got it. Yeah, he's a guy that we actually committed yesterday. We found out yesterday that he would be a Wildcat committed over Auburn and Texas Tech. And Jeremy Flax, the only guy in this in this class at this point from the JUCO ranks, and. Uh, Offensive tackle, uh, three years of eligibility remaining. He's going to be a guy that gets in early enrollee, and, and he's already got the talent uh, that they can see project onto the field. Uh, Jeremy Flax, uh, in, by some services, the number one offensive tackle, yes. Juco tackle, right. in the country. So you get a guy like that, and that's one of those guys you think, well, we can go ahead and plug him in in some way. So Jeremy Flax, a huge get for the Wildcats. Then here comes Reuben Adams Jr. They call him RJ. RJ. 6'3", 320, out of Woodbridge Senior High School in Woodbridge, Virginia, a four-star, 12th ranked guard in the country. Yeah, this was a kid that was originally committed to Penn State. Yeah. And then he said, you know what? 
I like what they're doing over in Lexington. Why not? I, 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 like, I like the Wildcats. Woodbridge, Virginia, like you said, four-star offensive guard. Uh, the thing I have written down about him, explosive athlete. Yeah. When, you, when you watch the highlights of R.J. Adams, he is just an explosive guy. And the way that Kentucky likes to run the football, you, when you get an offensive guard that has the uh, explosive abilities, that can only bode well for the offense. No doubt about that. All right, so we've got four of these uh, O-linemen already on the board. So let's hear what uh, John Schlarman has to say about these guys as we go next level in the film room with Jeremy Jarman. Okay. Uh, so I'm sitting here with Coach Schlarman. All right, as he's, as hey, he's I'm on this up, thing. As he's wrapping up a call with... Uh, with one of the guys that we're getting ready to talk about here. Uh, Coach, thanks for coming in to join us. Absolutely, man. Glad to be here. Yeah, we're glad to have you. So there's been a lot of talk, obviously, around that offensive line group that yeah. for, for some reason they continue to respond to your coaching. Uh, I don't think it's hard to figure that out. Uh, <laughs> you're a great person. You're a technician. Um, and these guys this season, so Drake Jackson finishing, getting some accolades. They're also Stenberg getting some yeah. accolades. So back-to-back -back seasons, uh, you know, seeing that offensive line continue to progress and get better, finishing is probably the best offensive line in America statistically with the number of yards on the ground. Now we're probably looking at bringing in the best offensive line class possibly in school history. I pulled up a few guys here. We're going to start with John Young. Awesome. I want you to tell me and tell the listeners yeah, uh, I mean, a little bit about him. Well, John, you know, uh, obviously – uh, in-state Kentucky guy and it's going to be really important for John Young to put that name across the front of his jersey you know and play for the Kentucky Wildcats and that's that's awesome he's athletic you know very physical at the point of attack it runs his feet on contact you know um, I just I love how he plays the game man he, 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 he plays it just like we uh, love to play it around here at Kentucky and that's physical you can see him finishing and you know I went to watch him in person this year and I mean, I think he finished uh, on his first, you know, three or four blocks that he had in the game where he mm -hmm. put the guys on their backs. Slow it down a little bit here. I think this one's pass protection, but you can even see here, I mean, speed. he's got good feet, good change of direction. And, you know, again, a lot of times in pass pro, you don't get that opportunity to finish, but he makes sure he does. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a good feeling to get pancaked on the pass no. rush. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, uh, you know, he just, he's, he's, he's got that tenacity about him and, and and a very high football IQ to go along with that, you know. And, and so, you know, you know, he's a guy that's just going to come in and blossom and just continue to get better. And, and we can't wait to get him here. How do we project him? Do we pro left tackle, right tackle, too you early know, to tell? Well, right now he played a lot of right tackle in high school, and that's probably a good place for him to start at and, uh, you know, begin begin his career there. And then, you know, as as we do with all the guys when they get here, once we we'll figure it out. You know, if he has maybe a faster path to the field on a different you know, left tackle or a different position, then we'll pursue that then. Okay. Coach, this next guy we got up here, DeAndre Buther, offensive lineman from Detroit, Michigan, played at uh, MLK out there. Yeah. DeAndre is uh, just uh, supremely athletic, man. I mean, this guy, he's got great feet. Uh, oh, again, that. he, he finishes, matter. does a good job with his pad level, and, and you can see right here, yeah. see how he runs, runs his feet on contact oh, at the yeah. end there? You know, oh, a, lot yeah. of, a lot of big guys would stop their feet, lose their block. That guy would fall off, maybe make the tackle. And uh, he has the ability to, man, have those fast feet, stay on, stay attached and finished. And, um, you know, again, I was really impressed with him when he came on his visit and we sat down and met and got to watch some film together. You know, very high football IQ guy as well. You know, here he comes off the ball, he gets in his fit. He's well coached up there. You can tell these guys, you know, they, they, they play for state championships just about every year with mm -hmm. his team. So they do a great job coaching him. And, uh, you know, you just love to see that finish at the end again. You know, that's, that's what you love. And um, great feet, man. Yeah. And he's a guy I think is going to be great out in space, too, for us. Yeah. So, but you see how he pops right up there at the end? Oh, yeah. Makes it look pretty effortless. Yes, he does. Good feet, good leverage. Looks like a really smart football player, physical. Yep. These first two guys, I'll tell you what, between Buford and Young, this is exciting. I mean, yeah. they're out here mauling people. Yes, they are. And, um, you know, I think they're both guys, too, that once they get in here and get with Coach Edmund and get with our Coach Hill and, and Coach Mack, those guys in the weight room, mm -hmm. they're just going to continue on that high trajectory. So we're going to switch over. See, we, you know, we had some Yahtzees here in the, in, in the last bid. And, yep. uh, you know, Jeremy Flax, uh, the number one rated uh, JUCO tackle coming in. He's a guy that's a sophomore. Yeah. He's going to be a sophomore. you got three years to work with this guy. Oh, we'll yeah. pull up his tape here. Yep. Let's break he, him down. Absolutely. He's a guy. He's only played um, offensive line for two years. He was a D lineman before that. 
Um, got into junior college and I think made that transition to O-line. But again, you, you see him come off the ball right there and he's not afraid to run through somebody. Um, he doesn't even stop on contact there. He just runs him right over and, and, and finishes and makes sure he doesn't get up, you know, and you love to see that, that finish. He's played left and right side, which makes him very versatile, you know, with position flexibility. Um, again, had a great meeting with him when he came in on his visit, mm -hmm. watching film. He picked up on our offense really fast. They did some things out there that's very similar to what we do. Yeah. And I think that's going to really help him in the transition when he gets here. I think on the next level, what would you tell him? Would you tell him to jump on that guy or would you tell him to, you know, get well, out in front of that? But let's get downfield, you know, go get somebody yeah, else. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe not rub it in and, you know, get that extra, you know, uh, shot on him, go find somebody else. But I don't dislike it, I'll no, tell you that. No, I don't either. He's looking for work, you know. Here he lines up on the right side, and uh, but I mean you can see right there Look for a that. six six guy. Watch his pad level. Right. He's lower than either one of those two guys that are much shorter right. than him on defense, and uh, just gets up underneath a guy that's a lot shorter than him, and drives him, and again finishes him to the wow. ground. And he's um, got great hips. He's got really good hips. Again, runs his feet on contact. Um, a guy that could probably play a lot of different spots on the line, you know. But we love his length and what he could bring to the edge force too. That is awesome. Uh, the next guy, Coach, we're going to go to uh, Ruben R.J. Adams from Woodbridge, Virginia. Yeah. They put out some pretty good players here over the last few years, you know, right there in that northern Virginia area. Very familiar with this area. Let's oh, talk yeah. a little bit about him. Yeah, R.J., um, uh, you know, he's, he's more of an inside type player. I think he could play guard or potentially even center. I mean, very smart football player, uh, plays with great leverage. He's the type of guy that, you know, with as much running as we do in between the tackles, I think he's going to be able to get great movement in there for us mm -hmm. and get underneath guys' pads, and he's very quick and athletic. Um, you know, you can see right there, it's not hard to find the fastest guy off the ball right wow. there. You know, I mean, he, he's really, really got a quick first step, which helps you on the inside getting into yes, that sir. position and getting into your fit before that D lineman can get you moving backwards. This is beautiful. You know, and so... Yeah, I mean, he, he's just, you can just tell his quickness right there. I love that, you know, and, and he's, you know, a 300 pound plus guy. It's just going to continue to, to develop, uh, you know, in the weight room as well. And can't wait, you know, losing Stenberg and Mason on the inside this year. He's a guy that can come in and compete for some inside, uh, you know, playing time, hopefully. Sounds good. Coach, and the next guy, uh, we're going to go to Josh Jones. Okay. A player out of Phoenix City, Alabama, Central Phoenix City. Uh, got a couple clips here for him. Yeah, Josh has got great length. He comes from a great program in Central Phoenix City. Uh, I know they won the state championship the year before last. I think this year they played for it. Uh, Jamie guards. Dubose does a great job down there. His head coach, I've known him for years, just from having to be, you know, when I was down at Troy in Alabama. But, you know, the first clip was pass pro and he finished. And then this one, he comes Boom. off the ball and engages, runs his feet on contact. You can really tell his length on film. He's got great length to be an edge type of player. And, um, you know, again, all these guys, what I love about them all is they're, they finish. They're finishers, man. They're putting guys on the ground. They're running their feet on contact. They're not standing around watching the plays develop. And, and that's just not on their highlights. You can turn on their game film and it shows the same right. thing. Coach, this is fantastic. This, this ensures that you're going to be the smallest guy in that offensive line room for a long time. <laughs> Maybe the shortest. I mean, <laughs> you, got, uh, you got five really, really good, outstanding offensive linemen that are going to help lead this program and continue to push forward. Congratulations, Coach. And thank you very much. We look much. forward to talking to you a little bit more. Appreciate it. Yep, thank you. All right, we're going to send it over to Dick as we continue our uh, National Signing Day uh, special. Do I, do I hit thank you, Jeremy. You can push whatever button you want. This is your day. <laughs> this is the big dog, Miss Merrill. And uh, we've been talking about all kinds of things, but especially the fact that you guys are still getting phone calls. He made a call just before you sat down, but I got to share this with you. Andrew Phillips' name oh, has yes. come in now. How old am I? His father interned for me at the TV station. Oh, wow. His father was a really good special teams player and a really sharp businessman. So that's another legacy for you. That helps, doesn't it? Another legacy. Of, you know, we, we're starting to get a lot of legacies yeah. here, you know, and, you know, Andrew Phillips and his family was a great family to recruit. Uh, I remember the kid when he came to camp uh, in the summer and we had some receivers in, you know, from uh, Louisville and Ohio and we thought they were pretty good. And Andrew Phillips showed me why we were so high on him. <laughs> He's a real good player that can run and can jump what you want in a DB. Right, Coach. In, in, listen, I'm in the profession of sales, and in, in, in my, my experience, you can sell what you can believe in. Mm -hmm. It's very clear that you believe in this program, you believe in this culture here. 
What is it to you about this program that, that, that gives you that belief that you just can go out and share it with these kids and their families? I, I have to take it all the way back to 2013 when we first took over here. And, you know, Mark, we went out on the road and started recruiting. And, and everybody was using a lot of negative stuff towards us, saying guys don't come to the games and it's a basketball school. And I remember the defining point for me was the spring game. And we had like 55,000 people show up. And I said, whoa, these people are serious. And, you know, from Dr. Capilouto and Mitch, uh, just the support was very strong. And it gave me something to go out to really believe in and say, okay, this thing is on the upside. And right. I, I was very excited about doing that. And you have tangible evidence of that with the training facility and the stadium yes. upgrade, which I know is a huge help. But what has also been a great help was, and you were talking to us about this off air, we just talked about Bo Allen, we just heard about John uh, and uh, John Young. And we've seen them before in the past, going back to Wesley Woodyard, yes. a great ambassador, and you had two of them. How big was that? How much of a help was that with this class? I think what people, you, you underestimate what Bo and uh, John did. Both were four-star recruits. Right. Uh, Bo, uh -huh. to me, is one of the best throwers, just leaders that I've seen in a quarterback coming out of, since the kids we've been recruiting quarterbacks. And John Young was a top 250 prospect in the country. I mean, John Young had a lot of people. And to get him on board early and become an ambassador for the university, he, he actually became the recruiting coordinator. He, people say he was my assistant. And, uh, and then getting Bo, when you get that quarterback locked in, it's, it's, it, it speaks volumes. And they, they have been solid, uh, never wavered, and it really got our class you know, going to another level because they were recruiting a lot for us. Well, I think it's important we talk about the culture here and what you guys are doing and how things are in the positive direction. And you take kids like you just talked about that fit very well into that culture. And, and not only that, but these are Kentucky kids that grow up here. They, they, this is their dream is to yes. play here. Um, and so then they can go out and be ambassadors. But it's that culture. But it, it, it's reflective of the type of kids that you're bringing in here. Yes. I, I just look at, I go back to the Kentucky kids. And any, it's not a sale pitch, but any Kentucky kid that's listening is that you got to look and say, you want to fight for your state. When you see Landon Young, uh, Cash Daniels, and Drake, them guys, and, and, and Vontae Robson, they really believe in their state and they really fight for it. Uh, I see the same thing recruiting Bo and recruiting John. They they just really, and you can go further down the line with some of the kids, they ain't in yet, but some of the kids out of Louisville. We turned this into, this is the state school. Nothing against the other school down the road, but this is your true state school. And, you know, I know if I grew up in this state, and I actually adopted the state. I mean, I really like to go fight for this state, and I, I, you see it in them young men. And I think a lot of Kentucky prospects are starting to see that, and a lot of high school coaches are starting to see that. They, they see the difference. Uh, I think in the past, they, they just didn't want their kids to go just, don't go to the school because you, you're in the state of Kentucky. Go to a school where the program is good, you got a good head coach, right. the facilities are good, and you see now that they are buying into that. When you guys got here and started recruiting, you needed everything. We, we, yeah. we know this. Now you can recruit more specifically, and you have through the years. You needed, you always need quarterbacks. You took care of that spectacularly. But you need old linemen this year, so you mm -hmm. go out and recruit for that position. Yes. How well did you accomplish those goals? This year? Yes, sir. Oh, I think we had a home run. I mean, we had a home run with all four of them guys. I think all four guys are four-star guys. And, uh, you know, it, you, you got to take your hat off to Coach Slarman. I mean, how oh, can yeah. you not want to go play for a guy like that? Uh, you know, I, sometimes I sit in this meeting because sometimes the tight ends, we go in this right. meeting and we do a lot of combo blocks, and I be listening to him, and then I'm like, man, I can run out, you know, at least get one block <laughs> in for him. But he, to, I said, and I keep saying, he's the best O-line coach in the country. This is not no sell pitch. I've been around a lot of O-line guys. I look at when you can draw up schemes, and people know we running the ball, and it still is effective. Right. Uh, that shows how good he is, and, and his players love him. Uh, we, I thought we have done pretty well in the last four or five years recruiting all linemen. Oh yeah, four or five star guys, and uh, I think every year we had last three years all America, mm -hmm. so uh, or some kind of national award. And I think we're gonna have a guy from since from George on drafted every year, one or two guys drafted. Right. So can't beat that guy playing for him. <laughs> Coach, it's one thing to have a need and to fill it, but the guys that you're filling this with, you had these needs, so sometimes you go out and take players just because you have the need. Yeah. But you look at these players that you're filling it with, just, just if you just look at the physical characteristics, I mean, it's pretty impressive what you guys are doing. you got a lot to work with here. Yeah, if, you look, if we go from each position, uh, there are 
like that was Stu's thing when we first got here after 2013 playing in SEC. He came in. He came in my room and he said he was he was kind of he always kind of pissed, but he was pissed. <laughs> and he said, uh, "We better go get Lentz and sides." Yeah. He said, "I want big tight ends. I want big O linemen. I want big D linemen. I want corners." And you've seen that in our team. But you do. You gotta. Uh, I think the man who was a coach at South Carolina, uh, coach uh, who was the guy that just retired, uh, played in Florida. Spurrier. 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 I remember he said he's always joke about stuff, and he said, "You know." They finally look good in their uniforms. And what he basically was saying was, these guys look like an SEC team They looked the part. And when you go look at us now, <laughs> to me, and I can say, there's no difference when we go in any stadium there. Oh, yeah. You know, we look just as good or even better than a lot of teams. You look good in the airport. Yes, or getting off the bus. Or getting off the bus. Getting off the right. bus, yes. Coach, yes. I know you got more calls to make. You're going to keep yes. an eye on things coming in. Congratulations. Thank you, So sir. far. Yes. And uh, keep up the good it's work. It's going to get interesting later. There you go. Okay. It really Thank is. Thank you, guys. Yes, Thank sir. you. Back over to Christy and Lee Kay. All right, guys, thanks. Well, just drop the mic because this wins for tweet of the day. I love it. Possibly tweet of the year. Uh, this one is from Ingrid Allen. Bo Allen's mom says, what was only a dream 15 years ago, but what's even better is the picture. Are you guys checking out this picture of him? We Little see number this. two, wearing the, the UK football. I'm, I, I can't. Because I can't. this is a big this day for these players. It. This is a huge day for these players, but you got to remember the family. Oh, I mean, man. this is a huge day for the, the moms, the yes. dads, the grandmothers, the, the, the whole family. This is a huge day for those guys. So congratulations yeah. to Ingrid Allen and, this is awesome. and everybody's family of one of these players. Well, especially like a, a Bo Allen, who is, uh, his dad played here. I mean, what a, what a great yes. legacy. So this is uh, fantastic. Now, I like this. As yeah. far as creativity Serious. is concerned, I mean, this this might be our, our leader in the in the clubhouse yeah. as far as creativity uh -huh. is concerned, as far as a tweet goes. Making a list, checking it twice. Let's get these Legit boys signed. Yeah, legitimately making a list. Someone yeah. is. Yes, <laughs> yes, they've got their highlighter here. Yes. Uh, P.S. Can we, uh, we can always add you to the list if you want to come see about it, too. Yeah. Come see about I it. feel like if Lynn Bowden said that for us, it, it'd be a little bit cooler. Yeah, yeah, much, <laughs> much cooler, cooler than if I much said cooler. it. Yeah, but absolutely. The, yeah, but we love that. Love that you got your list out, Jennifer, and you're checking it twice. We are too. So uh, we're keeping you updated. So speaking of that list, let's take a look at that and show you who has come in. You heard uh, Jarman mention this was breaking news. He didn't really indicate that was breaking news. But Josh Jones is an offensive <laughs> lineman was uh, uh, fresh in. Andrew Phillips, defensive back. You heard Dick Gabriel mention that. He is just in as well too. So um, two more coming in. Uh, what I've noticed solid. here, it uh, looks like the offensive guys look like Schlarman had all his guys wake up early and, yeah, yeah. and send got those faxes in. I mean, those, all those offensive linemen, it seemed like, have, have got their paperwork in early. That fax machine is really working. That's if it is a real fax machine, I'm not real sure. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty, I guess that's old school. But anyway, all right, so let's talk a little bit about Josh Jones. You heard, you saw mm -hmm. them break down some film, but this guy, 6'6", 300 pounds at a central high school in Phoenix City, Alabama, coached by Jamie DuBose, a three-star guy. Yeah, and this guy had, had 14 Division I offers. So, and, and a lot of those were from other SEC schools. So you talk about Josh Jones as a guy who was sought after after a lot of people, but he decided to be a Wildcat. Uh, you know, he likes how UK plays a lot of offensive linemen. And I spoke about that earlier, but John Schlarman likes to get a lot of guys involved, and he sees an opportunity with the Wildcats. One of the things I like about him, this is just interesting in some of the interviews that I read after he and his parents visited Lexington, was he wasn't just excited about the program and the school, but he liked the city of Lexington. He had nice. several quotes about like the crime rate was low and he really liked the vibe of the city of Lexington. Good, so yeah. this guy's ready to come in, ready to be a part of the football program, a part of the school and a part of the community yeah, as well. Yeah, embrace it, I love that. All right, so staying with the offense, uh, let's go now to an all-purpose back, Jaton McLean, 5'10", 180, just up the road in Fairfield High School, Fairfield, Ohio. Okay, listen, I, I, I'm thinking this has to be right because if it's on the internet, it's true, it's right? Anything right. on the internet is true. His 40 time? A 4-5? Am I reading? I don't know. we got to confirm that with Eddie Graham, but we'll see if that's right. But uh, this guy, uh, a four-star with ESPN, three-star with 247 Sports, Offensive Player of the Year in Ohio. Yeah, Offensive Player of the Year in Ohio, exactly. He can play in that slot, very versatile weapon. Probably not an every down back, but uh, like you said, Ohio Offensive Player of the Year is pretty good. Plays for uh, Jason Kraus, and, and I like the quote that Kraus said about him. Not only does he have that high class level of speed that you've got to have to play in the Power Five, but he gets to that top speed in two or three steps. 
We've seen the, uh, the running back room at Kentucky feature a lot of different types of runners. I mean, just look at the running back room currently. A.J. Rose, uh, Chris Rodriguez, Cavassier Smoke, all with sim similar but different running styles. Here's another guy. He comes in. He's a smaller guy, 5'10", 180. He's going to provide a different kind of running style to this offense for the Wildcats. All right, so then moving on to wide receiver, Ernest Sanders, 6'1", 205. Another Michigan guy coming in out of Flint from Beecher High School, um, a three-sport athlete, also playing basketball and track. That also means a very fast 40 time. What I'm reading here is 4'7". 740. That's yeah. motoring. Um, and this guy, again, a really great athlete with a good leaping ability. Exactly. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, he's a, he's a basketball player playing football yeah. in some ways. <laughs> and you always hear Eddie Grand talk about how when they're on the recruiting trail, they like to see some of these guys play basketball. You can see some different abilities and, and some different things on the basketball court than even the football field. This is a very talented basketball player, but an even more talented football player. So Ernest Sanders, a wide receiver, he's a, a Mr. Basketball candidate, in fact, in the state of Michigan. But he felt like UK was home, and he didn't want to miss out on the opportunity to play for the Wildcats. When you're looking for a home run type threat receiver, because of his leaping ability, because of his size, Ernest Sanders has the ability to be that guy, Christy. And I don't think you can underestimate the value of a multi-sport athlete. I think we hear athletes and the pros talking about this all the time, about what benefit that is. Has to be a benefit here for this kid, no doubt about that. So, all right, so a couple of good uh, offensive guys coming in here. So let's break that down and go next level. We've got Eddie Grand hanging out with Jeremy Jarman. All right, so I'm sitting here with offensive coordinator Eddie Grand. Coach, thanks for coming in to, to visit with us. Absolutely. So I had a chance to sit down with Coach Henshaw, the quarterback's coach this morning, Coach Schlarman, offensive line coach. Uh, let's just kind of start there. Uh, talk to us so far about, you know, those two groups, what your thoughts are, uh, how it's going to kind of add to some of the depth, the competition. Uh, one of my favorite quotes, iron sharpens iron. Amen. Uh, from the Bible, there seems to be a lot of iron on this team already. And there looks like there's some new iron that looks like it's joining this program. Yeah, it's going to be really fun, especially just when you talk about competing. And uh, you started the quarterback room, you know, having Bo, you know, Bo just it feels like he's been a part of this thing for so long. And for him to stay with us and, and that family, we've become, just come so close. Uh, I, I can't wait to coach him. Uh, I really, he's a, he's a gym rat. He's a guy that understands offense. Uh, his throwing motion is incredible. Uh, throws the deep ball as good as anybody I've ever seen. Um, so having him be a part of this, kind of getting back to some of our roots right. of, of where we started in this offense and then what we've had to learn, you know, I think there's going to be a great mix and uh, with a guy like him coming in. And then you got Joey Gatewood, who uh, is going to be sitting a year and, and uh, learning from Bo, learning from Terry. Uh, and, and, you know, he's a little bit different. Uh, yeah. And, and, and the... And the aspects of uh, probably runs a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have a nice dynamic in that room. Yeah, he looks like, Gatewood looks like he's got a little wiggle, kind of like, you know, some of, the, some of the plays that we've seen from Lynn this year. And, you know, you talk about that deep ball from Bo Allen. I mean, just, I've had a chance to see him play in person, not as much as you have, I'm sure, but uh, excited about that group. Obviously, the offensive line group, I think that this is going to be uh, the class, the group of offensive linemen that is going to take this program somewhere it's never been. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. I'm not going to ask you to comment on that unless you want to. Absolutely. You know what? Big men lead the way. I said that four years ago when I got here. I said, Big it. strong men or, yeah. or big men with bellies like me? Or? As long as they can move. <laughs> not like you. Okay? We'll take them big, big bellies and everything. But um, I, I, I'm just, I am, I can't be more excited about that group. They're athletic, they're long, they're big. And, you know, we've, Everybody has seen that from the last couple of years here. You know, we've been able to move people. Right. And um, move them very well. You, you can't, you just can't function in this league unless you got big guys. I saw and, a lot of Cardinal helmets moving back in that last that last game of the season. Yeah. Those guys did uh, did an impressive job. It was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. So, Coach, uh, we got a couple guys here on the board. We're going to start with uh, we're going to start with Jatan McLean, uh, Ohio. Player of the Year, uh, first team All State. Talk to us about him, some of his intangibles, what he's going to bring to the room, yeah. uh, to the talent that's already in that room as well. The first thing that comes to mind is explosive. 
this this young man you're going to see it right mm. here that's our counter play right there so he already i think their head coach there does a great job and so he's going to come in with some knowledge first of all but this is this is our counter play that, that you've seen lynn run you've seen oh. all of our three running backs do it but this is what you love about him when i say explosive there's some angles here that look people at these have. angles yeah these are big angles yeah he probably shouldn't score here uh so does you're going to see some i'm going to say yes he scores not on that angle i'm going to I'm going to say he does. It's going to be close. Wow. How about that? That's pretty strong. That is. But that's what that's what Juton brings. He brings, uh, you know, he's a great student. I mean, I would tell you, it's a great family. Love being around him. But you can see the explosive. It's sort of like Boom Williams, you yes. know? Yes. Um, you watch this kind of 0 to 40, he goes. Great balance. No. Uh, and, and vision. He's just such an athlete. And then, then watch this. You're not catching him. Uh, got a great stride. That's fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. So you got we got a, we got a good group in that room. You know, you look at AJ. You look at you know you're going to have uh, Chris Rodriguez and Cavassier smoke back Travis Tisdale, who's a lot like oh, yeah. this one right here. Oh yeah. You know, so you're going to have Juton and Travis that are a little bit like this. That you know we can we can kind of have some fun with those guys. Yeah, that's exciting. Uh, we're going to talk about Ernest Sanders, wide receiver from Flint, Michigan. I noticed we've been going to Michigan. Uh, a lot here over these last few years. There, there seems to be some good football players coming out of the Detroit area, the Flint area. I tell you, Coach Klink has done a fantastic job there. Uh, he's built relationships there over the last 10, 15 years that now are paying dividends. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are. We're getting great players. This guy right here, you ought to see him on the basketball court. You know, I love two, two guys, I mean, players that, that play two sports. And you ought to see him. I mean, he, he, can, he can get up over that rim and, and he can he can dunk in any way you can think of and just watch this guy stride when when he gets going he just oh, nice you know he, he's he's tall he can double move you but when you watch him stretch out here he's covering a lot of ground look at that it's big and strong physical so will he be an inside or outside receiver here we'll start him outside but you know what the way we've kind of evolved you know putting Lynn inside outside uh, you know, we're looking for guys to see who can learn this offense. That's what made Lynn so great, is that he knew everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I keep telling these guys, Coach, put me in. Coach, put me in. Well, son, <laughs> learn the offense. You know, and, and if you, the more positions you learn, the better chance you have to get on the field. So that's what we're going to try to do is develop these guys where they can go anywhere. So for the viewers, people that are watching and listening, talk to us about, you know, what kind of separates an inside receiver from an outside receiver. You know, you really like those big, fast guys outside. You know, you can throw the jump ball, 50-50 balls up to, you know. That really is, is what can separate those guys because you're on corners. The inside guys are usually quicker, um, and you're mostly on safeties, and you're working option routes in, in there with backers. Okay. So that's kind of what you've had, but I like bigger guys in there. You know, I'm okay as long as they can sink their hips and, 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 and they're athletic enough, like Alan Daly. I, just be ready for that name, you know, and I'm going to tell you okay. who we're going to use more inside is Josh Ali. We've kind of come to find out he runs better option routes than most anybody on our team. So this spring, we're going to have a good time with those guys. You're going to see Josh a little bit more inside, too. That's exciting. Let's finish up with this last play from Ernest. Well, here he is in a Wildcat, you know. Yeah. Again, you got a guy that, that you know, you, you can put him behind the quarterback, and, you know, we've had some experience with that, too. But watch this right here. Look at that. That burst yeah this is pretty impressive for a big guy that's six foot two you know look at him i mean that's like a great thoroughbred right there right you're at keeneland at the stretch right there absolutely absolutely coach i appreciate you coming by joining us i can't wait to see what you have in store for us uh, against virginia tech here here in a couple weeks and thanks for stepping in congratulations on this uh on this recruiting class thus far obviously we're still waiting on some more to yep. come in but Congrats on a great season, being able to overcome uh, some adversity, persevere, uh, being able to show your ability to, uh, to craft a game plan um, around players, uh, particularly Lynn this season when back was against the wall due to injury. So mm. definitely fortunate to have you. Thank Appreciate you. For it. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas go, to you as cats. well. Thank you, Jeremy, and we're going to switch you from offense now to defense. Brad White is here. And first of all, congratulations. Thank you. And we've been talking about recruiting to need, and you filled some needs. And I'm, I'm looking at the board. You've already got some DBs in hand. And I'm wondering about that tremendous 
crop of kids who went on to, to pro ball last year, you recover from that brilliantly this year, if I, if I say so myself, but you're still impacted by that loss of personnel, aren't you? You are, and uh, especially in, in this league, with, yeah. with the wide receivers that you have to face, the tight ends that you have to face, the athleticism, they're big, they're fast. Um, you always, you're always in need there. And, you know, I think this, this class has a chance to be uh, really good for us and impactful. Uh, and so we're, we're excited, you know, about what's on the board and, and, you know, hopefully what's to come. We were talking about this off air a little bit, but the, the, the defensive back position, particularly cornerbacks, to me it's one of the most athletic, it requires so much athletically on the field. But now you're seeing guys, I mean, they're six foot, they're six foot plus. We've seen that here in our secondary. You know, that's difficult for these guys. Go out and find a guy that can be that big and that athletic. It is. You know, those. That's. it's obviously what we're looking for. Uh, you know, the, the longer we can get. Um, and the other thing is it's it's not always just about height, it's about arm length, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, the, the guys that, that we've got on the board right now, uh, you know, they have that. They have that ability to to really be able to reach out and touch you. So right. in press or late in the down when the ball's in the air, uh, you know, they can affect that. Uh, they've got really good uh, hips. They can transition in and out. Uh, so we're, we're excited, uh, you know, about... Andrew and Ricky, uh, you know, and, and Carrington, you know, that are that are in the boat right now, and uh, so they are. They're that longer because you think about it, how big and fast wide receivers are. You, you, you look at the class that we're bringing in, and they're running full speed at you, and you're having to do it backwards, backwards. <laughs> then open up, transition, and then make a play. Yeah. He knows the direction he's going. You don't. Um, so, arguably, one of the toughest positions oh, yeah. in football to play um, and, and then it's tough to, to ask a guy to go after a 50 50 ball when you're giving away five inches right? it is well it, there's no question and then it's five inches in height and then you tack on you know a guy that's six three or six four receiver what his arm length exactly. is and so that that difference becomes even uh, more substantial and so we we've recruited to a standard uh, just like we play to a standard mm -hmm. and uh, you know coach Stoops is done a great job of uh, of making sure that that we stick to that because there there are a lot of uh, really talented DBs that uh, you know across the country that may be you know on the shorter side but it's just it's sort of our preference you know to go big and go long well and Vince Merrill just got done telling us how six years ago Mark Stoops came into his office and said we need length we need size and, and they changed the focus of the recruiting uh, speaking of athleticism I think it's no secret that over the last two years for your defense, as good as your back four have been, as good as your back seven have been, your D-line play has been as good as, as it's been here in many, many years. And you've gone out and recruited to that need this year. Absolutely. And, you know, when you lose Calvin Taylor. Oh, yeah. You know, and you lose T.J. Carter, you know, and then, you know, Quinn Bahanna's becoming a senior. You know, you've, you know, and then you, you've got Phil, you know, and we're all, you know, hopeful on you know that process and you know maybe getting that six year yeah um, but you know what you have to what you have to replace and uh, you talk about size and girth mm -hmm. and you you win in the trenches and you can I think you can see the games that we won and that we dominated and even though the ones that we didn't you know I think in the past, you know, people might have said there was a disparity between, you know, us and Georgia. But you saw pound for pound, the lines didn't move much. That's right. You know, and, uh, and our guys believe that they can play with anybody. That and gap seems to be that, closing. That, that it is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and we're, we're continuing to recruit to that. Um, and size wins. You know, at the end of the day, you know, someone someone says, you know, big guys are still big in the fourth quarter, <laughs> right. and and that's what we're looking for in the trenches. Yep. And uh, I think, you know, Coach Grant and the offensive staff have done an unbelievable job of getting that on the offensive line and the dominance that they played in Coach Schlarm. And oh, it's okay. fun. You know, someone asked me to, you know, after the Louisville game, do you, do you ever get a chance just to watch the offense? I said, well, I look up at the jumbotron 
sometimes. And, you know, for everything to talk about the running backs and Lynn, yeah. who do a phenomenal job, my eyes tend to drift to the O-line, D-line battle when I look up and you watch just this, the blue wall just <laughs> push. And you said, yeah. now that's, that's what it looks like. And sometimes in the first quarter when everybody's fresh, you know, it doesn't move much, but then it starts to move more in the second and then in the third and then by the fourth. And that's sort of been our MO these last couple of years, you know, when you, when you watch that. And that commitment to the trenches, and it's gotta be the same on defense. Because yep. if you're not big and you're not girthy, mm -hmm. when it's third and fourth quarter, that would be us moving back. Well, the nice thing now is the third and fourth quarter, it's moving the other direction. And, um, and that's what we've been able to affect, uh, affect the backfield and affect quarterbacks and uh, create some tackles for loss, uh, especially down the stretch. Uh, and Coach LeBlanc does an unbelievable job technique-wise, you know, just really so lucky to have him coaching those guys. Well, congratulations on a big day. I know your phone's right here. Yeah, it's not absolutely, going far yeah. away from you, so go get a recharge. Will do. And remember, girth is good. We need to remember that. That's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Girth is good. Not, not good. at this well, stage well, of life. Well, that's, what, I was gonna say, that's why I'm wearing black, you know, just to, <laughs> just to, to take the pounds off. Girth, girth isn't good for us. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's good for the young people, though. I'll try to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Absolutely. Nice job. Thank you, Coach. Good to Christy, see you. Thank you. Lee. Yes, sir. Back to you. Good for the young people. He's young. Brad White's young. I know. I was going to say. What's he talking he about? He doesn't have much girth anyway. Not, I mean, not, yeah, he's young. Slim guy. Yeah, so, but tweets are coming in. You're using the hashtag Vision2020. Keep those coming, and hopefully we'll hit you up with a few of them here. Yeah, latest one here from Coach Chad Parker. He's one of the assistant high school coaches for Joey Gatewood. Says, congratulations, Joey Gatewood. Go be great at Coach Stoops, at uh, Coach Henshaw, getting a great football player and an even better young man. So a lot That's of people that are connected to Joey Gatewood obviously know what kind of a player and person he is, yeah. and they're excited. And this one's simple, but I like it from uh, our Lee Stanley. Drop the mic, Yahtzee. What else Yahtzee. is there? Yeah. And That's don't it. forget, if you're watching, hashtag Vision2020, and we will try to read some of your uh, tweets as well as we go on throughout the morning, uh, revealing these uh, recruits on this big day for the Kentucky football program. Let's take you back to the big board now. We've got a letter coming in now. Uh, a wide receiver, Khalil Branham, makes number 14 on the big board there. We'll tell you plenty about him. He is a guy out of uh, Columbus, Ohio, mm -hmm. so we'll talk a little bit more about him later. But first of all, let's taking a look at the board overall. What you see is a lot of offense. You see a lot of offensive linemen that are in. Five that they expected, five that they got. So that's right. good news. You can check that box. And another position um, from the defensive side of things, as we just heard from Brad White, that they're really focusing on with this class is the secondary and they right. need it right when you have to replace an entire secondary like they did last year you're really trying to make sure that you're filling that pipeline the only defensive players you'll see on the board right now are in fact those dbs three of them are in so we're going to break those down and tell you a little bit about them we'll go next level with them as well so first of all let's start with ricky hyatt jr he's a safety six foot 190 pounds out of Central High School in Columbus, Ohio. One of the nation's top 40 safeties by ESPN. Yeah, he's out of Westerville, Ohio. Uh, and there was a guy that played at Kentucky a couple years ago. I believe his name was something like Benny Snell from that high school. So yeah, that, that high school produces some good athletes. Uh, Ricky Hyatt, a track athlete as well. Um, one of the nation's top 40 safeties. And he's known for his high football IQ. That's always good. 28 tackles and interception this past, this past year. A versatile athlete also on the offensive side of the board, although of the ball rather, a rush for 736 yards and nine touchdowns, also caught two touchdown passes, but he's gonna be playing defense at Kentucky and you can see why a uh, uh, safety back there. He's got a good vision for the ball and uh, he is a guy that uh, I think they're going to uh, see him grow a lot over the next couple of years in this program. Turning down Mich offers from Michigan State, UNC, Notre Dame, Ohio State. That's kind of a recurring theme again that you'll hear from all these guys is that they're turning down really big offers. All right, you heard us talk about him earlier. Andrew Phillips, a legacy recruit. He's a cornerback, six foot 180 out of Malden, South Carolina, Malden High School here. Uh, we said they a legacy because his dad, Carlos, was a uh -huh. linebacker for Jerry Claiborne at UK back in 1989. Yeah, and, and he's originally from Louisville. He's yep. in Malden, uh, South Carolina now. His dad, Carlos, like you mentioned, played for the Wildcats. His mom was actually a standout athlete at Danville High School. How about that? So they're from this area. Um, this is what I like about 
Car uh, about Andrew Phillips, um, Christy. If you go to his Twitter account, and I encourage everybody to do so, he has a video of him jumping over a car. Okay, yes. I mean, think about that. Wacky. Like, literally over the, the, the cab of the car. Yeah, and it's not, it's not doctored. It's not <laughs> no. fake. It's, it is the most unbelievable thing. I agree with you. It's unbelievable. Right. Give me a trampoline, and I still probably wouldn't clear the car. So that's <laughs> Andrew Phillips. He's a, a triple, tri triple jump type of guy, a track athlete. 38 tackles, eight pass breakups, two interceptions this past year. And uh, to get a kid out of South Carolina with Kentucky ties, that's big. Yeah, the only one in this class from that state. Uh, so, all right, moving on then to Carrington Valentine, uh, six feet, 185, out of Moeller High School. Tons of football tradition there in Cincinnati. One of the nation's top 100 uh, quarterbacks. Uh, most recruiting services are, are saying so. Yeah, and this is another kid that played some offense in high school as well, played some receiver, but moved the defensive back. He's another guy who's a basketball player. You heard Coach Eddie Grant just a minute ago talk about how he likes guys who can play multiple sports. It just kind of projects them well. Uh, one of the nation's top 100 cor cornerbacks, 32 tackles, five pass breakups, Two blocked kicks. How about nice. that? So nice. here's a guy who could probably plug into uh, special teams and probably will early on. So Carrington Valentine, a guy out of Cincinnati Moeller. And if you're in this part of the country, you know anything about that program, a very good program there. Uh, and Carrington Valentine is, uh, is a wildcat now. Well, what you're hearing with a kind of a recurring theme as well with everybody that we're talking about is just versatility. You hear us talk about how versatile they are when you're that great of an athlete. You're used in a lot of different ways in your high school. A lot of these guys have experience in a lot of different places. So um, obviously they'll specialize when they get here, but they're all versatile. Yes, you and, you, and you mentioned that defensive back room. That's always a room you want to keep restocking guys. Last year they lost a lot. There was a lot of questions going into this past season about that secondary, and those guys really rose to the challenge and played well and answered some of those questions. And I think this next group of guys are only going to help out in that cause. Obviously, can, they're Kentucky getting it done. When you got yes. you have needs, they're going and getting them. They're getting the right guys, the right athletes. And a guy who's in on that is now with Jeremy Jarman. He's got Steve Klingscale. I'm about to go on this TV show. I'll call you back. So I'm sitting here. I'm joined by defensive back coach Steve Klingscale. Coach, thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. Yeah, so coming into this season, you know, we were expecting a lot of growing pains from your group. Uh, we we're expecting a lot of liability out there at that position. You know, having lost, uh, you know, a lot of experience at the position. You know, the season's over except for the bowl game, and your guys, for the most part, passing efficiency, uh, defense, and finishing the top 15. Talk a little bit about that. Talk a little bit about this room, uh, how they've embraced your coaching and things like that, and uh, then we'll move on forward to yeah, to of course. The class. Um, you know, really the philosophy is, you know, we we just got a chip on our shoulder. Uh, you know, we knew what everybody was going to feel about us. Uh, I made that clear in the beginning of the year. Uh, we didn't look at any stats or anything really until after the season was over. I didn't even know that we were ranked like we were ranked. Um, you know, and the guys know we're, I'm still not satisfied. You know, we still want more interceptions. You know, we want to, you know, uh, keep leverage on the ball, make more tackles, be more physical. So, like, everybody's, you know, patting us on the back, but we're, we're not satisfied. Yeah. So that's the culture. That's the room. And that's how I want it. You know, um, they come in every day, uh, get an extra work. You know, be diligent in what we do, and you know, take it out on the field. And they're doing a great job of communicating, and they really just got good chemistry. You know, it's not a lot of guys are rotating in, so those guys that are playing, they're playing together with good chemistry, and they trust what we're teaching them. So, coach, I got three guys here. Uh, they've sent their paperwork in. We're going to start with Ricky Hyde, big defensive back uh, out of Westerville, Ohio. You got a couple plays here that you've picked out. Let's talk a little bit about some of his intangibles, some of the things that you've seen from him on tape that, that excite you. Well, you know, a lot of his intangibles you can't even see on the field. You know, his mm -hmm. character is amazing. He works hard. He's always running and conditioning and doing things to push his limits. Um, as you watch him as a football player, he's very versatile. He's very explosive. You know, he's a, a track athlete as well. He seals big old thighs. Look at that. Him. I'm going to pause yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So he's a powerful guy, you know, and he's fast. Um, you know, he um, he brings a lot to the table on offense, defense, special teams. He's a, he never really left the field for his team, and so you know I really like that. I like guys that just continue to go out and prove themselves. And you watch him; he he blasts that quarterback. He'll go intercept the ball. He'll go score with it. Like he's a very you know big time player for us. Mm -hmm. Another clip here of him. He's got good range, good vision. 
in a desire to get better every day. So I can't wait to coach him. It's a good job by him just being on top where he needs to be, where he's supposed to be. And then the rest is history. When get he gets that ball buddies. in his hand, he's, he can get it now. So, uh, you know, great family. Um, but mom and dad are really good, really, very supportive of him. Uh, his dad is, a, you know, instrumental in his success as far as, you know, working hard and, and going out there and giving this all. So can't wait to coach him. Yeah, we can't wait to see him. Next guy we got here on the board is Andrew Phillips, defensive back from Malden yeah. High School in South Carolina. S same thing. Now, he's originally from uh, Louisville. Okay. His dad actually played football here. Yes, he did. Yeah, and so, um, you know, he, he's got really good genes. He probably gets all of it from his mom. Don't tell his dad <laughs> said that. And I'm just playing. He Carlos. usually do. I'm just playing. Huh? But he's a really, he came to camp a uh, uh, year before, and we offered him. And then he came back uh, this past season. Wait. He's up top, yeah. And he is such a competitor. Look at him up here up oh, top for anybody that's it's secondary support right here. Watch him close in. He's going to go all back. the way. He's going to get him some. You know, and, not the, uh, and you'll see a couple clips here later. He does a good job, too, supporting the run. He's a fast kid, very athletic, also a track athlete. Uh, he'll be an early enrollee, so we get a chance to work with him this spring. Goes up, gets the ball high. Oh, yeah. He's playing right now in the uh, Shrine game, Shrine mm -hmm. mode at North Carolina, South Carolina. Um, so he's one of the best players in that in his state as well. And you watch him here. He's going to come up and just just make this guy just disappear. Mm. You know, I love it. I love it. Just really There's no effort. sound on this, so I'm going to put a little audio on it little so everybody audio, can little, hear it. A little sound effects. Yeah, yeah, but I'm going to add this audio. <sighs> you need a, need a train right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, train wreck. I like it. He had bad intentions coming in yes, on that sir. one. Yes, sir. He'll fit, he'll fit just fine in our room. <laughs> okay. The, <laughs> the next guy that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about Carrington Valentine, a kid out of Moeller, yeah. big time high school program there in Cincinnati. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about him. Coach. Carrington is a little bit longer. He's a rangy. Uh, he's only been playing DB really one solid season. Last year they put him in there out of necessity, had never really been taught anything. You see, he's physical too. He's, he's using nasty. everything. Oh, yeah. He's, all of these guys that are recruiting, they're all going to be physical guys and, and very good athletes and can run, track, all of them track guys, track stars. Um, you see right here when they, he kicks the ball off to him, he's going to take it to the house. But he does a good job just being physical and relentless. And his upshot is, is through the roof. So, like I say, he's going to be playing corner for one year. So I take it he's going to be trying to get his, get his name in the head to do other things besides just being a defensive back? Well, they all do. They all, I'll try to give him an opportunity to help us on special teams, of course. And, uh, but, you know, primarily I want him here to lock down these receivers. Right. Make plays in the SEC. You see right now, you see him be able to change direction and accelerate like that. He's got great stride. Great stride. He's long, you know. Great family as well. All three of these guys, their, their family has been very influ influential in their decision making. Um, you know, and they're solid, and we're going to have a great career here. So I can't wait to coach them. That is awesome. Coach, we're not going to hold you. Uh, hopefully, you know, I know we were talking a little bit earlier. Hopefully Mason, I'm back up here. Yeah, hopefully yeah. you're back up here to talk about maybe another player or yes, two. Sir. But uh, congrats on this season. Thank you. Good job coaching this inexperienced defensive back group and turning yeah. them into – uh, turn them into a, a, a unit that's shown that they can be one of the elite units in the yeah. country and, yeah. and in the SEC. So yeah. you have established a really good baseline with this group. We're excited about these commits that you got coming in to be able to add to some of that depth and compete ultimately for some of these positions. Yes, sir. So next time I see you, probably be in, uh, in Charlotte yeah, as we're getting right. ready to beat that's Virginia right. Tech. Be prepared. Okay. You know, those guys did a great job of taking coaching. It wasn't me. They did, they did all the work, not me. That's good so stuff. I appreciate my guys. So. Thanks, Coach, for Thank stopping you. in. All right. I'm going to send it over to Dick so we can continue our coverage of uh, kick, uh, signing day. Thank you, Jeremy. And you've already met John Schlarman a little bit earlier, so he has slid over here to talk with me and with Dusty. And I just found out that you guys share a recruiting bond. <laughs> you, you took him around on his visit? I was his host on his visit. What did you say to this young man? I Take off your letterman <laughs> jacket from high school. <laughs> <laughs> what do you remember about that John Slarman? Uh, same John Slarman. He's always been the same John Slarman. Everybody loves him as soon as you meet him. Um, he's just he's just that guy. But John John was a fantastic player, undersized player, but technician, knew everything he needed to do, um, and it's translated to his coaching. I was an old lineman for about 20 minutes back in the day, and I know what it's like 
to be crushed. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's obviously not a glamour position, and yet you have built that group in that room into such a source of pride, not just for them, but for the Big Blue Nation. The simple question, John, is how have you done this? Well, I think it starts with just recruiting high quality young men. I mean, you know, with great character, they're going to come in here and, and develop and work hard and do everything you ask them to do on and off the field. And uh, obviously, they have to have a certain element of talent to go along with that. But uh, I just love right now the attitude of our room, their work ethic, the leadership within the room. I think all of that has been part of our success. And um, like I said, it all starts with bringing in quality people from quality families. Which you've done today, apparently. Uh, and, but you, you've had turnover. That's part of college football. And that's part of the challenge, isn't it, is to take these names on the board and work them into what you've got now. Yeah, every year is a little bit different. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think even at the beginning of this year, you saw where it took us a few games to kind of find our rhythm. And then once we finally did, you know, things started coming together a little bit for, uh, more for us for towards the end of the year. But uh, this class, I mean, I think there's a lot of great, uh, you know, there's five great players within the class. You know, and, and I'm anxious to see how it all sorts out once they get on campus. John, when we look at the success you all have had, you've got some big players with some good size. We see this in the recruiting class. You've got players that are, that are big kids. But the thing that I like is when you see some of the video, you see a little bit of that nasty that you see in a guy like a Logan Stenberg yep. or a Drake Jackson. It's controlled nasty, but it's right. the good version of nasty right. where they're just aggressive and, and they're going to play to the whistle, always to the whistle. Um, talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, definitely. We want guys that will come in and finish. You know, the guys that aren't going to be watching the play develop and, 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 you know, buying a ticket and sitting up in the stands. We want guys that are going to be locked on their blocks and finishing blocks. And, you know, a lot of the technical stuff we can teach them, you know. Um, the big bodies, that is important. We can get them into our strength and conditioning program with Coach uh, Hill and Coach Edmund and Coach uh, D Mac, and they're going to develop these guys into some, you know, big old bodies that can move, move guys around in the trenches, and that's what we want. You're putting guys into the NFL draft. You guys are getting their degrees. They're blocking for 1,000-yard rushers. It's got to be a good time to be recruiting O-linemen to the University of Kentucky. I, oh, definitely. I think so. I think when guys come and watch us play, uh, they like what they see. You know, They like how our guys play. Uh, they obviously, you know, having those types of accolades with the 1,000-yard rushers and guys getting drafted and all that, making first-team all-conference, that's a big part of it, too. You know, those are all aspirations that all these young men that we're signing today have. Um, so hopefully they come in and develop the same way, and we're talking about them four or five years from now in the same manner. Mm -hmm. But John, what, when you go into these homes and, and, and people have seen the success that you're having on the offensive line, now what's your message? What are you telling the parents and the kids? Well, I think the main thing is that, uh, you know, when we get your child here on campus, we're going to take care of them in every aspect of their life. You know, I mean, whether it's on the field, off the field, uh, you know, social life, whatever it is, we're going to make sure we're doing our, our part as coaches and developing them so that when they leave here in five years, they're prepared for life after that, whether that's in the NFL or whether that's going and being a professional in some other line of work, you know. And uh, that's what parents, you know, that's what, yeah. as a parent myself, I would want to hear, you know, as well for my child. John, when I cover your games, when you were playing here, down on the sidelines, I knew how banged up your knees were, but you gave it everything you had. And I've got to think, well, I know, watching this line, it's a reflection of you. But you can't artificially create that. How does that work? You start with good kids. But that work ethic, it, it just sort of permeates from the inside out, doesn't it? I think so, and I think it's a culture that gets built, and I think it's the leaders in the room that generate that, you know, yep. and, and get that in motion. Uh, from, from day one in the weight room, you know, uh, those guys in there getting after each other, making sure they're doing their work in there, out on the practice field. You know, I mean, you can just, you hang around our practice afterwards and you can see one or two O-linemen grabbing younger O-linemen and staying out there with them extra and getting some extra footwork in or whatever it is. And... Um, Again, I think it just speaks volumes of the type of young men we're bringing into the program and, and, and their attitudes towards, hey, we want to make this a great uh, football team. It's, it's not surprising at all because to me it's about getting guys with the right character so that they add to your culture, but they, you got to have standard setters. John Salmon was a standard setter yep. when he was here. He was a standard. Was he the most athletic or most talented player on the offensive line? No, but he set the standard. Anything less than this was unacceptable. And, and you've got guys like that. You've got guys like that on your line, and those are the kind of guys I, I would assume that you're still recruiting. No doubt. And, and the great thing now is that the guys that are setting the standard in the work ethic department are also very talented. Right. So <laughs> when the younger guys come in and they say, this guy's a starter, he's really good, he's making all conference, plus he's working his tail off in the weight room, how can I slack? You know? Right. I mean, I, I'm not going to take it easy. I mean, he's not going to let me. So when those two things kind of mesh and go together, you really got something good, I think. Last year, you lose Bunchy, you lose Big George, two all-star caliber performers. 
saying goodbye to Logan and some other guys this year. As I said, part of college football, uh, but a, a huge plus for you in building this depth is this new redshirt rule. Yeah. You could play some of these guys up to three games. How great is that for a guy like you in your position? Oh, yeah, it's great. I mean, you know, the fact that you can, you know, get some guys some reps and it doesn't even count against them right. for a year, I mean, it's huge. So we've had guys in the last two years come in and, you know, get some uh, reps, you know, maybe towards the end of games or whatnot. But it get, kind of gets their feet wet, and I think it adds to their motivation. You know, sure when you enough, come yeah. in and you redshirt, you know you're not playing at all. Yeah. You know, you don't have something to kind of shoot for that whole first season. Why and, am I dressing up? Yeah, I mean, and now those guys say, hey, I could get in a game or yeah. I could get out here on game, you know, and, and do something and show everybody kind of what I'm about. And um, So it kind of gives them a little motivation in that redshirt year, too, to continue to develop. Congratulations Thank on another you. big day. You got Appreciate your belt ball pullover. Yeah, man. One more game to play. Absolutely. Thank we'll be ready. Coach. Congratulations. All right. Thank you. John Schlarman, let's send it back to Christy and Lee Kay. All right, guys, more tweets coming in, and this is what I'm talking about right here. Like, you know signing day is serious business. Yes. When you take a PTO day, that's exactly what SNC Gohan 21 did. Took a PTO day at work <laughs> for this day every year, not just this year, but every year. And good for him because there's probably a lot of people just sitting at work, not getting any work done, yeah. just watching this. But at least he He's took honest. a PTO day yeah. and, and is watching. So thanks for watching us. One more tweet here from Gabriel Wilburn. Uh, the most exciting national signing day ever. Ever. Our hashtag Vision 2020 Go Cats. Uh, that that's big. The, and I love it. there you go. And I like this profile picture, by, by the way, from Will Painter. <laughs> yeah. In the next two or three years, <laughs> Kentucky's going to become a top 10 team. Uh, listen, I could be with you, Will. When you, when you start bringing in recruiting classes like this, you know uh, that Mark Stoops, this has been a, a, you know year's worth of work that is uh, culminating now in um, just class after class, recruit after recruit that comes in that can really make a, a big difference. And, and the true Kentucky football fans are watching this today because sure. they know that unlike just the games on the weekends, and, and they're important certainly, this is the day that really builds the program for the future. I mean, the lifeblood of a football program, especially here at Kentucky, is National Signing Day. That's when you start to learn the names of the guys that they're going to become household names over the next couple of years. So this is big, and, and thanks for taking PTO days and watching us as well. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, so let's take another look at the big board. we got a couple of names to tell you about. We'll talk about Khalil Branham here in just a minute, but the latest one coming in is Trayvon Ribka, defensive lineman, the first defensive lineman mm -hmm. so far to come in. They are expecting several, so um, so far he is the first one to come in, um, but that's now up to 15 on our big board. So let's tell you a little bit about a pretty exciting player who you like an awful lot, I know. Uh, Khalil Branham, wide receiver, 6'1", 210, out of Northland High School in Columbus, Ohio, uh, a four-star with 247 Sports and the number 10 player out of Ohio. This guy is quite the athlete. He does it all. Yes, he does it all. And, and Christy, we're not supposed to play favorites here with our favorite <laughs> recruit because all these guys have likable characteristics. But Khalil Branham might be my favorite as far as from a social media standpoint. Yeah. If you're going to follow any of these guys on social media, and I encourage you to follow all of them, but if you're going to follow just one, this is the guy, Khalil Branham, at KBug underscore dash. Hey, that's a shout out. That's Look pretty good. How about that? <laughs> he, he, you know, some athletes don't use social media for positive things, but yeah. he absolutely does. He gets it. He knows how to do it. He's become another one of those guys, a recruiter type guy, like we talked about John Young, Bo, Bo Allen as well. Um, go to his Twitter account. You see videos of him working out, putting in the work. That tells you he's a guy that's not afraid of the weight room, yep. not afraid to try to get himself better. And he's also a guy that is retweeting all of these guys as they come in this morning on his Twitter account currently. He's retweeting them and saying, hey, welcome to the family and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, as far as his athletic ability, a four-year letterman in football, basketball, baseball, track, and I believe, I believe, Christy, he actually played some lacrosse. Now, I could be making that up, but I think I read that he actually played lacrosse. So you talk about a kid who's well-versed, and he's from, from a very athletic family. He's got yeah. a brother who plays at Eastern Michigan, has a cousin who plays basketball, and uh, so this is a, a very, very uh, interesting and talented kid. Well, how fun for him to play against his brother next yes, season because, right here. They're yeah, on the schedule. They, oh. They'll open the season with him. Let me mention one other thing. Not only is he an athlete, but he can play the piano. How about I mean, that? That's that's he's a that's how man. that's how enthused I am about Khalil Branham. I well, mean, he's 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 a, he's a big get for the Wildcats. He's a Renaissance man, which makes me think of Jeremy Jarman, <laughs> who I think is a Renaissance <laughs> uh, yeah, man absolutely. as well, who is obviously standing by in the film room, and he's got a guy that will know a thing or two about Khalil Branham. That's the wide receivers coach Michael Smith. Thanks, Chris.
Thanks, Christy. So I'm sitting here with wide receiver coach Mike Smith. Coach, thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, vice versa. It works both ways, doesn't it? Um, so obviously, you know, with Lynn uh, coming into this season, Lynn Bowden, you know, he, uh, he was asked to step into a different role to All finish right. up this season. Um, and we were able to really get the, the ground game going. Talk a little bit about, you know, everybody seems to forget that guys have to block on the outside. They have to block on the edges. You know, even myself included sometimes, you know, kind of give the offensive line a lot of credit, which they deserve. <laughs> but your group, you know, a lot of guys who expect to have a lot of catches and things like that this season, they were asked to take on a different role to help the team. Talk about what that was like being in that room and, 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 and putting those game plans in place with those guys. It was a challenge. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sit here and tell you, I would be, I'd be lying to you if I told you it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, but you know, the, the great thing about the room and the group of guys that I have is that they're, they understand it's a team game. You know, uh, for me, selfishly, when you lose a, your top receiver uh, to go play quarterback, you, you know, you sit back and like, wow, where am I going to go now? But uh, I thought I had guys in the room that were capable of making plays for us as pass catchers. Uh, and, 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 they, and they did, you know, when we, when we threw the ball, they made plays. Uh, you hate to see a guy right. leave your room who is your, your alpha, right. but uh, for the betterment of our team and for this program and how it worked out, hindsight's 2020. I mean, shoot, we couldn't ask for anything better. You know, we took our best athlete and he had the ball in his hand every play. So, uh, you know, a credit to Coach Grant and the rest of the offensive staff for you know, seeing that and, and, and building the game plan around him. But back to the guys, man, it, mentally it was, it was probably the biggest challenge I had as a football coach in my career. But I, I, I take my hat off to my, to my guys. I give them all the credit in the world because they accepted the challenge. Right. And, 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 and they, they made plays for us, you know, blocking. You know, we, uh, we clown in that room about, you know, everybody's getting these big, big blue wall T-shirts, but we want the little blue wall T-shirt, you know. So, uh, but it was, it was fun, you know. And at the end of the day, it's all about winning. And, uh, again, my guys understood that, and, and they, they stepped up and made plays for us that way. So we lose two wide receivers, you know, uh, after the bowl game. We lose uh, Amai Wagner, and we also are going to lose Bowden. Uh, will Wagner, will he be healthy for the bowl game? Yes, Ahmad's fine. So he's gonna go out uh, with a bang. We gonna hopefully we go out with a big bang. You know, uh, that's you know it's unfortunate. Again, I only had him for two years, uh, but Ahmad's a tremendous, a tremendous football player. You know, I think he'll he'll have an opportunity at the next level because of his size and uh, because of his catch radius. Right. And, and Ahmad runs well for a big guy. You yes, know, he does. Uh, and 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 there's there's certain things that you can't coach. I can't coach six six. Right. You know that's that's uh, that's just a guy given ability right. he has. Uh, big hands and, and his, his ability to make those plays that he was making early in the season uh, I think gives him an opportunity to, to have a, a good career at the next level. So the Big Blue Nation, obviously we have you sitting here, they want to know who are going to be able to step into some of these positions, step into these roles. Today we have a couple new members yes. who have sent in their letters of intent uh, to join uh, the Kentucky football family. Uh, definitely excited about them. Had a chance to talk with Coach Grant a little bit about Ernest Sanders out of Flint, Michigan. Can you talk a little bit about Ernest before we uh, watch a few clips on Khalil Branham? Ernest is a tremendous athlete. You know, the thing that I was very intrigued with him, and, and you know, doing this a long time and going through the recruiting process, you want to get a good fit, not only for your room, but for you as a coach. The thing I, I loved about Ernest was he stuck with us. I mean, a lot of people came in and, and sold him their song and dance, and Ernest was, he was staunch. You know, he, he was, had, his, had his ten toes in the ground and was hmm. like, no, nah, I'm, I'm here with Kentucky. And uh, as far as him as a, a football player, you, when you do watch him, I mean, he does it all. He can catch the ball, he can run, he can block. He's a, a, just a tremendous athlete. And then you go watch him play basketball, and the guys are free show on the basketball court. So I'm excited for Ernest. I'm excited for his family, and I'm happy I'm going to have the opportunity to work with him. Okay. Uh, we're excited for him. So we're going to switch over. We're going to talk a little bit about Khalil Branham. We're going to pull up some clips that you, uh, that you found on him. Talk a little bit about Khalil, what he brings to the table. He's another guy. You know, when he has the ball in his hand, you'll see here, I mean, he's playing Wildcat quarterback. 
when he has a ball in his hand, he's just exciting. He's a big, strong mm. kid. You, spin you know, I mean, very fluid. Look how that's, natural he is when he does That's the B it. button right, on, right. The, on the joystick. <laughs> on the joystick, give him Boom. all mad moves. <laughs> and then give him a little stiff arm, and then he shows his explosiveness and his speed. Uh, you know, the thing that a lot of people are going to know about Khalil, here, you look at him right here, how just fluid he is coming off the line. You know, he's got free access right here. So he doesn't have it, have to put any moves on at the line of scrimmage, but Looks like coming he on a conveyor belt at the yes, airport, he just 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 running smooth, man. Big guy, good hips right here. Then he just big body this this DB and and walks away from him. Uh, but the thing that I've been intrigued with Khalil is not only that he he's a great athlete, but he's prepared himself that way to be a great athlete. You know, everybody hopefully follows him on Twitter. He's dropping a workout video every day, huh. and and as a coach, I mean that's that's a coach's dream, right? To get a guy that wants to be in the weight room, wants to improve on his hands, wants to learn how to run routes and do those things. And, and I think here's a young man that got to jump on the rest of the rest of the country, to be honest with you, because of his approach to the game. And when as a coach, when you get a guy like that, you know he's gonna come in hungry and he's going to push the rest of the guys in that room to be better or they'll lose their job. And that's, that's the great thing about recruiting is the day we sign you is the day we're trying to replace you. You know, because everybody wants to talk about they want to right. play in the NFL. Right. Well, that's what they do in the NFL. Right. right? They're trying to replace you the day they right. sign you. And it, and, it, and it breeds that competition. And when you get that, that's the type of group you want to have as a receiving court. These guys, they're going to be able to come in and fill the shoes of, of, of Wagner and, and, and Bowden? We're hoping so. You know, uh, Khalil will be here early. Uh, nice. So we're, uh, we're excited to get him here and get him started. And, uh, again, you know, and, and not to knock the guys I got in the room right now because I think I got some pretty good receivers. Right. Uh, but they, they know and they understand, you know. When we recruited them, it was the same, same song Absolutely. and dance. Absolutely. You know, hey, fellas, we, we're not done. You know, we're going to bring in guys that – are going to compete and try and uh, try and help us win a championship. Yeah. And if, if you're not you're not pulling your weight, man, we're going to move on. Yeah. You know, and that's that's just the nature of the beast. But uh, that's why you play the game. Absolutely. Mike, I appreciate you coming on set to join us. Thank I you I look very forward much. to seeing you, uh, what, in a few days out, few in, days, uh, man. Few days out in Charlotte. It's coming quick, brother. Yeah. We're looking forward to it. Let's get after Virginia Thank Tech, you, Coach. Appreciate you. Yep, good seeing Thank you. All right, I'm going to kick it over to Dick. I think we got somebody else on the stage, and uh, let's see what they got up for us next. We do indeed. Eddie Grant, you talked to him earlier today, but uh, we want a few more answers from you. First of all, big day. Congratulations. Yeah, awesome, awesome day for We've talked to the position coaches about how a lot of these names impact them, but really every name on the board impacts you and the offense in a general sense. The guys making the plays, and then the defense that goes and gets the ball and gives it back to you. Absolutely. You like what you've seen. It's, it's, it's awesome. Uh, great class so far. And, uh, you know, it starts up front. Yep. You know, and, and you look at the guys on the board for us right now, big men lead the way. And it's, uh, as an offensive coordinator, uh, really exciting day. Well, I was going to say, as a coordinator, it's kind of like, you know, today you're getting all the ingredients that you're going to work with, and you got to figure out how to make something nice out of it. It's nice to know that you get those big guys up front that are kind of the, they're the main part of the ingredient. But coach, this year's been a year where you've had to try new things and come up with new schemes. How does that help you as a coach when you come in and work with players with different talents and abilities? Yeah, I think it's helped us all on offense just in terms of growing and, and learning that what your personnel is. And uh, I think we've learned a lot over the last four years. Uh, it's, it's just been, a, it's been an interesting dynamic and uh, it's helped us become better coaches. And uh, as this group develops, you know, you know, you got a, a couple quarterbacks in this class that you just kind of you don't know how, how they're going to develop. And so but we've got now some places that we can pick and choose from. And, and I think it can be exciting for, for our offenses. Well, we were just talking about that off air. When you, you sign Bo Allen, you sign Joey Gatewood, two different styles of quarterback. And yet you can fit both of them into whatever you're doing here at Kentucky with regard to your offense. How much have you evolved? as a game planner. Yeah, I think uh, game planner, game caller, uh, our staff offensively phenomenal, the way they've kind of, we've all pieced it together. But, you know, even getting the ball to the right guys, you know, and me evolving that way to try to get it in your playmaker's hands. But yeah, they are different quarterbacks, but we've had so many different quarterbacks right. and, <laughs> and we've had to evolve that way and learn um, that, that there's no doubt. I think we could go into a game tomorrow with Bo Allen and. 
And I don't think there's any question that we wouldn't have any problem moving the ball and being successful. Same with Joey. Uh, and, and that's had to build confidence through what has happened to us. Uh, I wouldn't maybe not have said that three years ago. <laughs> well, as you look at college football in general, you know, you used to, in, back in the day, you'd have one guy running back. You'd have one guy that was kind of the guys at certain positions. But now you're starting to see where you've got talented backfields that share the load and share the duty, and it's successful for the players. It ends up being the best for the players to not get 100% of the time, but to share it. And, and sometimes you even see it in the, in the quarterback room and having all these different uh, talents and abilities, you can do that. What are your thoughts on that? I love it just because, you know, one, there's hope for everybody. You know, right. they, they work and they grind and now they get to, to play. I think that's it shows up in our offensive line room because yeah. if, if they can do it and they're athletic enough and they're doing their things and we trust them, Coach Larman's done a fantastic job of, you know, playing eight, nine, ten right. guys. So their, their week is different the way they're preparing because they're locked in. And same thing with the running back room right now, a lot of competition. You know, we're using the two-back stuff, and mm -hmm. we're kind of experimenting with that. And, you know, the ones that have been selfless for us has been those receivers. That's true. You know, it's been tough because, you know, we had a couple games where we threw the ball at Vanderbilt. He was 8 for 10, and we took some shots. But, you know, we've had so many rain games. And, no. But all they've done is gone out there, and they've practiced their tail off every day. So, Blocked. Uh, and, oh, yeah, they've been great on the perimeter. And so I think as we move forward, you know, having the, the competition that we've had, I think it's going to be really good for our football team. You know, the, the phrase that keeps coming back is they're running the ball. Everybody knows they're running the ball, and they're still successful, which obviously speaks to your big guys, also to Lynn. But there have got to be some subtleties, if for lack of a better term, folded into what you're doing now that, that gives teams, they think they know what's coming, and yet they're chasing you. You hope so. I mean, that's what we're trying to do. You know, we do, we do a really good job of changing personnel right. early and formations. So, you know, you can call some of it eye candy, whatever you want to call it, but Works. you want to make that defensive coordinator feel uncomfortable. And I think our guys have done a great job up in the box. Coach Larman gets a feel for his guys early of, of, of what's working and what formations, and then we're going to grind that thing until they stop it uh, and and you know we, we got a head coach too that uh, is that lunch pail and, and mm -hmm. hard hat guy and, and he sees it as from a coordinating spot from his perspective and he'll come over there and gives just great stuff you right. know that he yeah. gets in our ear and say well, you know what about this you know they're ready for this now and and that's been really good for us as well I think that's one of the things when you kind of when you equalize a talent and we've talked about the talent level here at Kentucky and you know we look as we, we looked apart you know we, we definitely looked apart but when you can cause the other team the other side of the ball to think if they're thinking they're a step behind and I think that's something you all have been able to do and, and it speaks to our kids and the type of kids you're recruiting their ability to adapt and to know what's going on in our offense I agree We're, they're really smart you know and uh, what we do in the run game uh, and the changes that we can make on game day. But throughout the week, if we're adding something, conceptually we're trying to keep it the same. Right. But I'm going to tell you something, you know, Coach Larman, we have what we call Terrible Tuesday and Wicked Wednesday. <laughs> terrible Tuesday and Wicked Wednesday. And I can't stand it because I want it to be clean during the week, you know. Right. But we'll bring the worst blitzes you could ever imagine into it or backside but you know what, his whole thought process is if we can get it done now and we get it picked up in, 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 on Saturday, sure. then we'll have a chance. And I'm gonna tell you something, we've had people bring zero blitz, yep. bring everybody in the house, and we get it blocked. And it's all based upon terrible Tuesdays and wicked Wednesdays. <laughs> So uh, it's been it's been fun to watch. Well, as a quarterback, I would much rather find that out when I had a red jersey on in practice. <laughs> so I'm, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, apparently those days turned into Super Saturdays, so that worked for yeah. you. You mentioned game day. You've got one more this season. And as we let you go, we know Virginia Tech has a legendary defensive coordinator. Yep. He has some extra time to prepare for you. But you have time to prepare for him, don't you? Yep. we got some wrinkles already that we're excited about. And, and, and Bud's, uh, uh, he's one of the best. Yep. I mean, he's one of the top three guys in the country, I think, if you were to talk about defensive coordinators. So it's going to be a challenge. He'll have answers. That's the one thing that I know Bud That's will right. have. He'll have answers. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully we will too. And uh, I know our kids will play hard. Uh, I know their kids will play hard for him because that's the kind of guy he is. And so 
should be a heck of a matchup. He is literally leaving right now to go get started on that game plan, so we'll let you go, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you so yes, much. Thank Appreciate you. you. That's yes, Eddie Grant. Let's go back to the big board. Christy and Lee. No rest. What that means is there's nope. no rest, right? So between all the travel that they've done the entire month of December getting ready for this, <clears throat> excuse me, they're also preparing for a bowl game, by the way. So got to put a game plan together. They're, I mean, there's just no rest. December has become that month yep. where you finish up with your season. You get ready for that bowl game. Recruiting really ramps up unlike it has in the past couple of years. And this is the time of the year that they see those dividends pay off in the future uh, because of days like today. Let's get back to the big board. Yeah, We've got some more tweets rolling too. in. Yeah, Walker says nothing better than seeing uh, Bo Allen up there in that number one spot on the big board today for National Signing Day. Going to be a st an historic day for BBN and the future is bright. We love seeing Bo Allen up there as well too. Absolutely do. And, and here's from Bill Simpson says so proud of uh, UK coach Stoops and the football team as time passes. Thank you Mitch Barnhart for doing this the right way and uh, supporting our coaches to give them a chance. The Cats continue to develop and that scares the SEC. I think that speaks volumes. Yes, it what's does. Going, it really, and we'll talk about that. But Wildfire uh, Micro says to all the recruits coming to Big Blue, Big Blue Nation football, welcome to the family. Absolutely welcome to all of the 15 so far that are in and the ones that are to come. But uh, let's touch on that for just a second about Mitch Barnhart. That's a situation where uh, in this day and age, nobody wants to give a coach time. And Mitch Barnhart has understood you have to give him time. You have to give his staff time to get where we are today. This is his sixth season. Mm -hmm. And now here we are. So, I mean, this, th that speak, it does speak volumes. You got to give the coach time. You got to give the coach facilities. Yep. And, and let the coaches get those players into the program. And Coach Stoops and Coach Merrow and the rest of the uh, assistant coaches have been able to do that in large part because of what Mitch Barnhart trusted in those guys. And, you know, some people always question whether or not Kentucky could be a football program, right. Christy, Christy, that could, could actually compete in the SEC. But now they're right there in the mix in that arms race. And Kentucky football is really making up some dividends. Oh, it's here. Lost Absolutely. Time. It's here. Well, it, when you recruit uh, really quality guys, you get quality wins. And a guy that uh, knows a thing or two about being a quality guy uh, is hanging out with uh, Dusty Bonner and Dick Gabriel. That would be all Mr. Everything, Max Duffy. Here we go. We are indeed. We're the best planner in America. We can say that. All America, All America, first team. Congratulations on a big year. Thanks. Yeah, it was awesome. Is your head spinning? It must be, and it's probably spinning this way, not that way, from Australia. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess so. It's all a bit, little bit surreal. Uh, I probably don't have a great appreciation for like how good of a season I guess we had as a punt team. Um, just trying to do my best each week and do what I'm told. So I hope it's a good result. It's a good result. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, the older you get, the more you'll be able to appreciate those things and think back. But I, I really do, watching you throughout the season, I think you were the best punter in the country. And one of the things that impressed me the most was, was when, when defenders would get close to you, you never panicked. Back in the day, it was punter, get the ball, get it out as quick as you can. And you kind of enjoyed running around, letting people get close. And, and you know, that was pretty incredible to watch. Yeah, I guess we just got to play the game a little bit. I may not have the strongest leg in the country, so I've got to find another way to get it done. So hold on to the ball, um, be happy to take on the pressure and wait till the last second to get rid of it. And then hopefully be really accurate with where I put it, um, put it across the field, put it away from the returners. So, Good scheme set up by Coach Hood, who was unfortunately leaving, but really good scheme by him, and uh, we'll continue on with that next year. You and I were talking on the radio the other night. You mentioned schemes, that it's not just boot the ball as hard and high <laughs> as you can, and, and you were so accurate placing the football and really helping your defense. How much pride do you take in that? It must be a lot. Yeah, a lot. Um, to do my job for the team, obviously, sure. uh, you can't really be selfish as a punter, so you just kind of do the best job you can for the team and jog off and hopefully get a, a little high five from Coach Stoops or something as you go off and, yeah, take your seat back on the, on the bench. But, um, no, it was awesome. We had a really great year. I'm, I'm happy that we kind of helped out the defense because we weren't sure how the defense was going to stand up this year and ended up standing up really well. So I think we played maybe a little small part in that and keep pinning them. Yeah pinning them back there and making the offense have to drive down the field, so I'm not really happy. One of the things that they've got going here at Kentucky is the culture, and the culture in the locker room and just, just and, and throughout the whole program. What do you see about the culture? What is it about the program and Coach Stoops and what y'all are doing that you, you kind of admire or respect the most? Um, I think it's great. When we talk away from the facility, you know, when we have a social night out or something like that, I think lots of teams 
in front of a camera may say we have the best program in the country, we really enjoy it, but we genuinely think we do. Um, we really think that the time that Stoops gives us, you know, our time to ourselves as well as the time at football um, is better than anyone else. I talk to all the other Australian guys in the country and I genuinely think we have the best setup in, in the country. Uh, I talked to Pro Kick Australia back home who sets us up with all the schools and I said if you can send anyone anywhere, send them here. Um, it's just he's really um, forgiving with our time. Um, gives us plenty of time, you know, often to have have a nice like little um, mould of everything that we have. Um, but then also when it comes to football, um, our coaches are great. Uh, they set us up to be successful. As you can see, we've had plenty of guys drafted last year and yep. a couple of Americans this year. So um, they just do a great job. You mentioned the program in Australia that arranges basically these marriages. You know, the punters and the teams. You told me the only thing you knew about the state of Kentucky was KFC, which is obviously worldwide. Now that you've been here for a couple, three years, what can you tell people in Australia about the state of Kentucky? Uh, horse racing. <laughs> um, the basketball team. Basketball team's pretty good. Football yeah. team's building. That football team's pretty good now. So, yeah. um, no, it's awesome. It's, uh, Lexington's a great town. Um, big enough where there's plenty of things to do, but small enough where there's no traffic. So that's the best bit about it. Uh, it gets a little bit colder than what I thought at the start. Um, and but that, rainy. Yeah, it does, it does. <laughs> but uh, when it snows, it's, it's nice. So um, no, it's great. I've really enjoyed my time here. Um, the fan base especially is awesome. They get behind the football team, the basketball team. I've never seen anything like it. So um, they're pretty fanatical. They don't have much to support here in Kentucky, just us and Louisville. And I know what team I'd be going for. So no, it's great. What, what will you remember most about your days here at Kentucky? What, what do you think you'll, you know, 10 years from now, you'll, you'll think back the most on here? Um, I've thought about this a couple of times. Uh, I, I really enjoy the bus ride to the game, uh, just yeah. the anticipation yeah. and driving through all the fans and seeing all the guys that are tailgated and um, just seeing the fanfare and not knowing what's about to happen in a couple of hours, but jumping on that bus and even as a punter, getting pretty nervous about yeah. what's, what's about to happen. and then walking through the catwalk and seeing everyone that's come out. I think that's just such a unique part of American football, but just Kentucky football as well. Um, we don't do that back home. And uh, it just makes me yeah, excited for the game because SEC football is something that is just unbelievable. I was going to uh, say, you're playing in the SEC and, and obviously you know now what that means, but going to a place on the road like a Texas A&M last year, which was massive, and Georgia and things like that. I had to make your head spin a little bit when you first got here. Yeah, uh, I always make sure I go out in the stadium uh, as soon as I get there just right. to try and pretend that there's it's packed and kind of get my head around it all. Because, I mean, we have some big stadiums back home, don't get me wrong, and MCG gets forward to 100,000, but uh, I never, unfortunately, got to play at that stadium. So um, to be able to play at all these stadiums, even at home, I mean, when it gets loud at Kroger Field, it's, it's great. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we were playing Florida or someone and we're, we're taking it to them, it's, it's awesome. So, um, yeah, it's something that I'll, I'll look back on and cherish. How about some love for your long snapper this year? Academic All-American carrying that academic load and never has had a bad snap. Yeah, no, he's good. Like, uh, I give him a little bit of uh, grief on Twitter. Um, but, I've uh, seen it. Yeah, but no, he, he's been great. Uh, I couldn't have done it without him. And then Tristan Yeomans before yep. that was awesome. So those guys don't get a lot of love uh, from many people, but they're greatly appreciated. You only know their so. name if they screwed up, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah. When you took off this year on the punt, <laughs> what, what was your immediate thought once you decided I'm going? I, I mean, I actually almost out of habit took a bounce. Because in Australia, yeah. like after you run a little bit, you have to take a bounce. And I hadn't run for so long with a football in my hand. I almost put it down and took a bounce so I could keep <laughs> Literally running. Literally bounced the ball. Yeah, I like if you watch the tape, I shaped to kind of do that, and then I put it up <laughs> under my arm. So um, just out of habit, I was like, thankfully, thankfully I didn't do that. But um, no, it was uh, something that I thought about doing for a while, and I should have really done a couple more times this year, I think. Um, so hopefully that's something I can build on next year. And you delivered a blow. I did, yeah. How satisfying was that? That was good. Uh, hadn't <laughs> put on a proper tackle for a long time, so uh, it was good to kind of get the juices flowing again and, and get out there and make some tackles. I hope I don't have to make too many, but yeah. um, it was good. I, I uh, was pretty disappointed he returned the ball, so I had to go get him. You've been pretty modest uh, about your future. A lot of people assuming that NFL teams will line up for you. And there are Australian kickers, as you well know, in the NFL. Your style is a little different, obviously, being an Australian football, not a rugby kicker, right. but Australian rules uh, football style of kicker. 
Do you believe that might hinder your future if you're thinking at all about the NFL? I'm really not bothered about it, to be honest. I'm just trying to do the best job I can for the UK. Um, I just want to win That's games. Wise. I just want to win games here and get my master's degree and kind of set myself up. So what are you studying? I'm studying sports psychology. Okay. Yeah. So I was joking around with media uh, this week saying that when I was at when I was in Atlanta at the football awards, I should have been passing out my business card to some of those guys. <laughs> exactly right. Trying to be their sports psych later in the future and take three or four percent off them. That'd be nice. Good thinking. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, I kind of feel like you, you potentially you may revolutionize the game of punting a little bit. I, I sincerely believe that you are one of the most dangerous weapons. Uh, from a special teams perspective because of what you could do back there running around holding on to the ball uh, and then like you said not just kicking like holding on to it and kicking it giving your chance your team a chance to get down there but putting it where exactly where you wanted it to go uh, I think there's incredible value there but you know it's funny to me to hear hear punters talking about getting this juices flowing you know that's different I mean it's just a different thing and I, I think that your effect here um, I don't think I, I think people are going to be looking at that going you know that's pretty valuable yeah, um, I don't know. I hope so. I yeah. hope so. It's funny. I think it's funny as a punter that um, when we went to Atlanta, the highlights are us not punting. So, like, it's always <laughs> funny to kind of play a position where everyone enjoys it when you don't do your job. Um, and when you do your job, it's like, that's not noteworthy. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I hope so. Um, we, we have done a good job flipping the field this year and kind of kicking it away. But, um, you know, if they're willing to try something that we do, then I'd be happy to give it a shot and see if it would work out in the big league, yeah. Max Duffy is a long way from home. We're glad you're enjoying your stay you. here in our state. And congratulations, good luck in the belt bowl. Thanks, appreciate it. All right, let's Thank send you. it back to Christy and Lee Kay. What's not to love about Max Duffy? No, there's, you won't see a punter up here on the big board today because <laughs> yeah. Kentucky's got a pretty good one. And yeah. Max Duffy, great kid and an even better player on yeah, the field. Yeah, he's one of the most interesting guys, too, to talk to. So you, you just love, I love that. I love that uh, he was willing to come over here and talk to us. I love that you guys are tweeting us as well using the hashtag Vision2020. Still waiting on a couple of guys coming in. But Jason Huber tweets that the Hubers are excited about UK football signing day. We're just getting started, bro. And don't they look excited? They do. I mean, well, look listen, at them. And I know where this, I know where they sit. So where I'm on the field on game days. <laughs> doing some on-field PA stuff, and I know exactly where they sit. I see them every single game. I'm telling you what, rain or shine, I actually saw Jason Huber sitting in his seat with water up past his ankles in a couple of games, but he wasn't going anywhere. And so good point. You had, you had to be a dedicated football fan this year with all the weather games that the, the Wildcat fans had to endure sitting yes. out there in the stands and, and getting rained on. So yes, a great tweet there. Uh, John Chamberlain says, this is like Christmas morning as a child, except – now I'm unwrapping six foot seven, <laughs> 350 pound linemen. Yeah, those are the best kind of gifts. Yes, I love and, that. And we talked about at the first, at the beginning of this broadcast, Christy, this is kind of like a Christmas day, not just for the fans, yep. but the coaches and even for the players, because this is a Christmas day for these guys that are committing today because they're getting to finally see a path of where their football career is going to take them and to hear here to come here to Lexington. This is a, a big day for everybody involved with the program and their paths in blue and white, which we absolutely love. And so let's take a look at the big board because we have another interesting guy that just came in. Isaiah Cummings, a wide receiver, another one that was stolen out of the city of Louisville that I think a lot of folks were surprised that he wanted to come to Kentucky. Um, we'll talk to you about him and right. we'll break that down uh, a little bit as well, too, and tell you what he's got to offer, which is plenty. So um, from the wide receivers that are coming in on this class is, I mean really so much ceiling on these guys yeah and Isaiah Cummings like you said we'll talk about him in a little bit but from male high school he's a talent in this state gotta a guy that you got to keep the guys yes. in state and this is the first year that uh, Mark Stoops and company have kept the guys in state in fact they kept a, a guy uh, uh, at the place center uh, in state just a couple of years ago Indeed named Drake did. Jackson yep and he's hanging out now with uh, Dusty Bonner and Dick Gabriel I'm going to check out. All right, uh, Dusty Bonner's trying to leave. You're staying put because we have another special guest. This is Drake Jackson, of course, uh, the Kentucky center, who is the centerpiece of that O-line. But uh, congratulations, first of all, on a big year. And we've talked to John Schlarman a little bit about the turnover in the O-line, but you've got new names on that board. How much are you looking forward to meeting these guys? Maybe you've already met some of them on their visits and, and keeping this thing going with the O-line. Yeah, Coach Slarman has done a really good job of building up that room, uh, putting the right types of guys in there, guys that um, are going to do their job, do, do good off the field, on the field. And we got a couple guys coming early, I believe. So I'm excited to get those guys rolling because I know how much that helped me when I came in. Oh, yeah. And like I said, credit to Coach Slarman. He always talks about building uh, a culture within the offensive line room. 
And now that he's been able to go through numerous recruiting classes, he's finally got that. And as you can see, it's paying off for us. Absolutely. Greg, what's it like to play for a guy like John Swarm? What's it mean to you to play for a guy like John Swarm? Oh, man. I could go on and on about yeah. that. Um, I consider Coach Slar kind of uh, 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 an uncle, that father figure um, when I'm here. And he just, he just, he doesn't just talk about football with us. He talks about life off the field. Yeah. Um, he talks about being a father, uh, being a good husband. Um, and so that's, and it, and it all does kind of circle back around to football and, and, it, and it makes us better people. And it makes us, you know, coachable. It makes us, um, we're, we're just able to learn from him. Right. I could go on and on, to be honest with you, but uh, it's been a blessing coming to play for him. He's yeah. one of the main reasons I decided to come to UK. I put my faith in him, and he put it in me, and, uh, and, and it's all gelled together really well, and that's why you've seen the payoff here in the past couple of years. Greg, you talked to us earlier this season about sort of regrouping as an O-line when things weren't going too terribly well, and I'm thinking about that bye week after you start off two and three. You said you guys kind of got together and refocused. Tell me about that process. What happened before, what happened after? Because you certainly took off as an O-line. Yeah, you go into the season and and uh, with with your offense, and we know what we're going to run. We're going to run the ball. We're going to throw the ball. We're going to do some stuff. And we just kind of tried to do our jobs. And we didn't realize, yeah, I don't think you, you realize certain things until uh, you have some things happen to you, like like going two and three to start the season, struggling offensively. And I remember in the bye week before one of the practices, Coach Stoops came in and said, hey, we're going to turn the season around with you guys. We're going to put a lot of weight on your own shoulders. I remember talking to him one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what he said. He says, I expect a lot from you guys, and I'm going to need it. So we took that on our shoulders. We said, okay, that's our job, so we're going to do that. And we did the best we could to help the offense out, whether that be opening holes in the run game, mm -hmm. keeping whoever's back there throwing the ball clean. And it didn't matter to us. We're going to do our job. We're going to help everyone out as best we can. And it's a sense of pride. And everybody bought in. Receivers bought in. Tight ends bought in. Bought in quarterback, running backs, everybody did. Defense trusted that we were going to do our job. And obviously, we wish we could have done that sooner. But you don't really realize it until you're in a bad situation sometimes. Well, things were happening, too, during this season. Yeah. So. Uh, there's there's just a lot of stuff going on at the yeah. beginning of the year, and we figured it out. We're not done yet. We got one more game, um, but we want to carry this mentality over into next year. We want I mean that wants to be we want that to be a staple of our program. If you're going to play and compete in the SEC, you got to have guys up front. You see that in recruiting, and you see that in our on-field performance right now. You could see that tangibly as a fan from the outside. You could see when that shift happened and you could see that identity take place. Uh, and you could see that it really did. It, it came through the offensive line and then the defensive line. And you saw how that played out. But we talked earlier with Coach Slarman about standards and setting standards. Uh, offensive linemen, in my, my experience, it's, it's a tough group. And you, you better, whatever the standard is, you better perform to it or better or else you're gonna get pushed out real quickly. Um, talk to us a little bit about the, your standard, the standard of, of your offensive line and the group of guys in that room. Coach Slarman has held us to such a high standard that um, some guys can't handle it. And that's why they're not here anymore. And the guys that stay and figure it out become successful. You look at Bunchy Stallings turned into an All-American, yeah. barely played a snap his first three years here. George Asafo, you know, NFL draft pick, playing really well. You look at Logan Stenberg, two-star recruit, turning into a top 100 draft pick. And I know the way I've developed has been incredible. And it's because he holds you to a standard, not only on the field, but off the field. And he, he preaches to us, we will not be that room that has guys showing up on a list, missing class, missing a tutor, bad grades, not doing what we're supposed to do. So, and, and, and if, you don't, if you don't meet that standard, you're not gonna be here. The, your teammates won't appreciate that. Your coaches won't like that. It's not going to work out for you. So the standard we've been held to is what has made us competitive in this conference because you have to have talent up front, and you have to um, develop that talent. And you look at the defensive line, too. I mean, you look at the guys that are in that room. Those are guys that do their, do their job. Calvin Taylor, great guy. TJ Carter, Quentin Bohanna, Mark Juan's coming along. All these guys have really made an impact on this team 
through what they've done, not only on the field, but really off the field. And it's hard to understand that when you're young. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, what, 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 how, yes, I do. Yeah, what kind of, what kind of, well, same with me, what kind of impact does my grades make on my performance? Right. You know, why do I, you know, if I miss a weight session every now and then, what's that going to hurt? Right. And it's just, it's just part of growing up. And Coach Larman demands that you become a man. And when you leave here, whether you go and play in the NFL or not, you're going to take care of your business. And that is all direct reflection of our on-the-field performance. Lynn Bowden has told us that he realizes it's not easy blocking for him because, as the defenses have learned, he's liable to do anything at any time that makes him so dangerous. Tell me about adjusting, and I'm sure happily so because the results were great, but what it was like adjusting to the offense and blocking for a guy like that and trying to stay legal because, as you know, he goes this way, now you're doing this, and now you get a flag. Yeah, at the beginning it was hard because we had a new scheme we were blocking <clears throat> and Lynn didn't necessarily know where to go. As the season has, has gone along and you see our improved yards per attempt, total yards in a game, touchdowns, explosive plays, oh, yeah. you see that now Lynn is getting up to the second and third level clean. And he knows where we're blocking. He knows where we're going to hit the hole because we don't – we don't run a bunch of different plays. We might dress them up a little different. But he's, through his experience, he's getting better at running the ball and letting us block for him. Right. Um, we, we are going to block the way we're taught, and he's got to run the way he's taught, and that's all coming along. And you see where, I mean, you watched the Louisville game. It was pretty rare he was getting hit by a defensive lineman. True. You saw him getting up to the second, third level, and that's where Lynn can make stuff happen out in space. Let them, you know, pull some dance moves on the DBs. <laughs> and it's and it's an incredible thing to see. And not only you see it with Lynn, you see it with Chris Rodriguez, sure, you yeah. see it with Smoke, you see it with AJ. You and see him getting smaller in the distance as they head for the end zone. Exactly. Quickly. And, Quickly. and I love that. There's nothing better. And then until they get hawked on the 10 yard line, I got to run 80 yards down there, <laughs> catch yeah. my breath. And then line back up for oh. another play. I always make fun of them, yeah. But um, you just see it all coming together by. You know, the first couple weeks, maybe we weren't getting them all the way up to the third level clean. Right. We put up 517 on Louisville because he was getting up there pretty clean. Yeah. So we take pride in that. And Lynn honestly has done a great job handling that and, and learning and growing and communicating. So it, it's been something really cool to see how that's happened when we didn't practice this in the spring. We didn't practice this in fall camp. We did not practice this in the first five weeks of the year. <laughs> It's amazing. It is, and it really is, because you spend so much time working on your playbook just to throw in a bunch of new stuff yeah. halfway through the season, and kind of worked out for us. It has. Congratulations. Thank One you. more game to play. Yes, sir. Best of luck in the Belt Bowl. My best to the family. Yeah. Have fun. Thank you, sir. Appreciate, Appreciate it. y'all. Drake Thank Jackson, you. let's go back over to the big board, Christy and Lee Kay. Lee Kay, we're two for two with players that we've talked to that are so incredibly articulate, yes. that are so well-spoken, that really are such great representatives of this football program on and off the field. Love it. Oh, I love, I mean, every time I get a chance to talk to Drake yeah. Jackson, he brings such great insight, not only to the program, but yeah. the offense and a great guy to be a part of this program. Looking forward to a big final year for him this next year. No doubt. All right, so we got Rock Mom who is uh, tweeting us loving this NSD 2020 today. UK football getting it done. Congrats to Coach Stoops and the entire staff. So and yes. I'm sure Fred Flintstone's excited <laughs> too. Uh, how about Emmett Smith? Emmett with the one. E. Yeah. Emmett Smith. Uh, I work nights, uh, night shift and should be asleep, but it's National Signing Day. Go Cats. That's Thanks, dedication. Emmett. dedication. Yeah, that is that, dedication. That's right. You, we can I like all sleep sleeping. later, right? I like this sleeping. Is, so this that's, is National Signing Day. What I really love is Emma, though, who is in school, who's watching. <laughs> so, hi, Emma. We appreciate you watching. And she said, may not learn one thing at school, but who cares? You're learning a lot. This is very educational. So you're learning a lot. Go Cats. But love that, Emma. Love you guys uh, all out there watching. Use the hashtag Vision2020. We got a couple of uh, cats that have just come in that we want to tell you about. Uh, Sam Anelli, outside linebacker, has come in. Justin Rogers, our second defensive lineman, has come in. So two more big, really good gets for Kentucky. I mean, these two guys right here, Sam Manelli and Justin Rogers, I mean, those are cornerstone pieces right sure. there for this class. And yeah. those are guys that this whole group over here off camera was waiting to get those 
those faxes, so to yes. speak, that paperwork in for these two guys especially, and uh, big gets for the Wildcats. All right, so let's break it down a little bit and tell you about Sam Anelli, 6'4", 250, out of McDougal Technical Institute in Deerfield Beach, Florida, uh, a four-star, the number 96 player overall in this class, according to uh, Rivals. Tons of offers from this guy and really had a great senior season. He really did, and Anelli was a guy, Christy, who was originally committed to Miami, but then came and saw what they were doing here in Lexington and decided, hey, you know what? I want to be a Wildcat. Born in Nigeria, um, kind of grew up playing basketball. That seems to be a reoccurring theme with some of these guys in this class this year. Uh, kind of new to football. Yeah. Hasn't played football a lot of years, but you can see with his frame, he's got the ability to turn into a Josh Allen type guy. In fact, I remember on Twitter a couple of months ago, there was a picture with Sam and Al Pinelli and Josh Allen standing next to one another, and it looked like he could turn into the Josh Allen sure. of this program yeah. uh, defensive end uh, number 16 player ranked overall player in that talent rich state of Florida so that tells you something about the talent that Anelli brings to this program and you'll see him in the Under Armour All-America game That's he right. was selected for that he also will be an early enrollee which you know we've heard the coaches talk about what great benefit that is to these guys to really be able to get here early and this is a trend we're seeing a lot of this uh, so when we when, by the time we break all this down and have all these names in a lot of these guys will be early enrollees so all right now let's move on to uh, let's go back a little bit to one of the guys that came in very early on Derek Jackson linebacker 6'1 250 out of West Lawrence High School in Dublin, Georgia. Um, this guy, number 47, uh, inside linebacker by 247 Sports. Yeah, and he's UK's only inside linebacker in this class so far, and that tells you something about what they think of him because that's a position that you're going to need some guys in the future, and they're putting him right in that, in that position right now. Uh, a run stuffer. That's the kind of guy that he is. You know, he arrived in Lexington, came to a camp in June. Stoops offered him that day, Christy, and he committed that day. Nice. That tells you something about what he feels about this program. He came here in June, saw something he liked, got the offer and said, yeah, I want to be a part of that program. But Jackson, uh, a very talented guy, led his team, his high school, in tackles for three straight seasons, 129 tackles, 12 tackles for loss, nine sacks, four quarterback hurries, and an interception as a senior. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. So, yeah, you're going to see this guy play with a lot of power, a lot of physicality. He seems really edgy and a guy who knows exactly how to coach him when he gets here is hanging out with Jeremy Jarman. He's got John Summerall. Hey, so I'm sitting here with uh, former U.K. linebacker John Summerall, now inside linebacker coach uh, John Summerall. John, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So we're sitting here on uh, National Signing Day here, 2020. Uh, Got some clips here that you pulled up on on one of the, uh, one of our guys, uh, D. Eric Jackson. Before we get to him, uh, just talk a little bit about the state of the the linebacker room. Obviously, we're losing Cash Daniel, uh, guy who's been here yep. four years. Yep. I mean, and grind it. Yep. Uh, had a chance to get to know Cash behind the scenes. Talk a little bit about him. Talk about the youth and the, uh, the leadership that's in that room. Yeah. So Cash, uh, you know, obviously being an in-state guy, um, takes a lot of pride and wearing the Kentucky logo, which uh, you really appreciate as a coach because um, he's got a lot vested into this program, into the state. It matters to him. Uh, and lo love Cash, man. He will forever be a Kentucky Wildcat oh, yeah. and be one of us forever. And um, one of those guys that will be remembered for forever. Um, and really proud of the way he's handled himself and the career he's had. And, you know, and he's gone through some ups and downs this season, and, but he's really fought through all of it. And, and continue to, to be bought into the team mm -hmm. and lead and, and, and have positive energy. Um, so love, love Cash Daniel, man. Um, and then obviously we're adding De'Eric Jackson. Uh, De'Eric has kind of got some of the similar attributes from a physical standpoint and being a really good box linebacker and, and a thumper that Cash does. Um, the rest of the group that we already have on campus, you know, obviously um, DeAndre Square oh, yeah. plays well linebacker for us. Man, he is, uh, he's really instinctive, um, kind of a, a, a savvy football player uh, and just has a little bit of a killer instinct about him um, and, and a highly intelligent football IQ. Um, really impressed you know, with DeAndre's ability to learn the game and study the game, and, and it comes easy for him. Chris Oates uh, played Mike the last half of this season. Um, both of those guys will be true juniors next year. Chris is a long 
rangy, athletic guy that can, man, when he runs, he can run. Like, he can really open up and go. Both those guys um, have continued to take steps. Really, you know, after the first bye week, I think started to develop and mm-hmm. grow. The first five games, you know, some ups and downs. The right. last seven, I thought you saw, okay, we're clicking. Um, and then Jamin Davis, man, is a guy that I'm, I'm really pleased with the way he developed the last four or five games. Early in the year, um, and Jamin will be a redshirt junior, so all three of those guys will be juniors. Jamin, early in the year, probably had expectations to play more snaps than he was getting. Mm-hmm. Uh, was hampered a little bit in training camp with a, with a hamstring injury. Um, and as the year went on, continued to invest, continued to study, continued to prepare like he was going to be the starter. And then when his number got called the last four or five weeks, he showed up ready to play and made some big plays and some big yes, moments. He, yes, he did. He, the Louisville sack he had was a, a huge play, and, and he did some things that were really impressive and really appreciate the way Jamin approached each day and didn't didn't give up. And then Mark West Bembry, we've moved inside um, about six weeks ago, probably seven weeks ago, um, just to create some depth. Marquez, he, he's a, you know, he came here as an outside linebacker coming off of a knee injury. Um, and has picked it up pretty pretty quickly from a mental standpoint. Mm-hmm. That's probably the most undervalued thing at inside linebackers. You got to sort of understand the whole picture of the defense. Right. Um, you've got to understand the run fits. You got to understand the pass coverage. You got to be great in communication with the rest of the guys in the field, and you got to you got to see formations and plays. And so, Bembry's really stepped up, and he's I think he's going to have a big spring and really you know have a chance to compete to provide some quality depth for our room. So. Hopefully it's not hard for you to sway me on why we went and yeah. got Derek Jackson. Let's let's take a look at these clips that you found. I don't for think us. it'll take long. You'll see a couple uh, physical plays right there. He's number seven. He plays bent really well. He's a big guy. Now he came to camp. He's 250 pounds. Uh, you see him right here. He's a knockback tackler. You know, you see some guys. Ooh. Some guys are drag down tacklers. Some guys um, take people on at the side. Um, Derek typically knocks people backwards. He has good body control. He's got good body control. He plays with a really good base. You'll see him, uh, he looks real patient, easy, and smooth. Kind of like right here, he's almost like he's loafing, but he's just kind (laughs) of temping the ball carrier. Yeah, he's like, I don't know quite sure what's going on back there. Let me scope it out. Yep, don't panic, nice and easy. And then play physical through contact and knock the guy backwards, which I think, you know, a lot of times in this game now, with as much spread as you see, you don't see as many big physical linebackers. And in this league, you got to have one or two on right. your roster um, because you're going to play big physical football teams. But a, you can see the contact courage he's got is, is, is legit. Absolutely. Standout player coming out of West Lawrence down in Dublin, Georgia. Uh, he was the uh, defense player of the year in his region. Yep. Those clips were enough for me to say that you, you, you got something to look forward to with no, him and no, this group. No doubt. And I'll tell you two things on the air real quick. One, you know, we, we, Coach White and I went down there and watched him this spring, and we told him he needed to come to camp for us to stamp off on him being able to commit here. And he, and he drove, left West Lawrence, Dublin, Georgia, at 11 p.m. one night, got here at 7 in the morning. Wow. Drove through the night with his dad on the day that his mom was having surgery. And they got to our gate 12 of the stadium. We got him in the building, let him hang out for a couple hours, went and did camp, and didn't flinch. And he earned the opportunity to be here. Um, so that right there fires me up because he's committed to this program. He's committed to the game. And then probably the other thing that really impresses me about him, man, I went down there the first week of the contact period after we beat Louisville, and I do my visit with him at the school. And I'm already – he's been committed to us since June, so I'm already talking about the details of our defense. Right. And installing defense. And th- this is, you know, probably 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And then um, – that night I get to my hotel room and at about 10 p.m. he shoots me a picture of a, of a couple of pages where he's drawn one of our base calls on defense against a couple of formations. And he says, hey, coach, does that look right? And that's what we're hunting is guys that love football. Oh, yeah. And this guy loves football. He's committed to that's it. That's awesome. Yep. John, thanks for stopping and spending some time with us. I'm hoping that we're able to maybe bring you back on for a sec, for, you know, for maybe for another segment. You had a chance to share with us that there may be possibly a little bit more uh, uh, Yahtzee to be played here uh, the rest of this day. So keep us uh, keep us informed on that, okay? You got it. Appreciate you. All right. Thanks for stopping Thank by. You. Yep. Hey, I'm going to send it back over to Dick.
Thank you, Double J's. And, you know, just a, a quick aside, I was with a baseball team in San Diego about 10 years ago, and John Summerall was coaching out there at USD. He came by to watch his beloved Wildcats play baseball, and I remember thinking, you know, someday that guy needs to be on staff at Kentucky. Who better to extol the virtues of this program? Listen, it's always good to have former players come back and be on staff. We've seen the John Schlarman effect, and yep. now we're seeing the John Summerall effect, and yep. it's just... Um, they believe in the product, they believe in the program. And it works. All right, what we're gonna talk about right now is, and there have been a lot of big names that came through today, but two of the biggest, literally and figuratively, mm -hmm. are Justin Rogers and Sam Anelli. Let's start with Justin, a five-star athlete, depending on which service you look at. Uh, one of the top 10 players in the country, according to another. You talk about an impact player, and again, literally and figuratively. How big was this get for Kentucky? Well, I think it's huge, and we've already talked about the importance of the offensive and defensive lines and what that means in a, ga in a game. And when you get a guy that's 6'3", 315 coming out of high school, and it's not just a big guy. Look, people, all the people that are wanting him, that wanted to get him to come to their program, they want him because he's a big guy that can move and that can play and plays with force. And so to get him and to have him in the, in the interior defensive line for Kentucky, is it's a huge get. Um, and, and you got to wonder, too, they redshirted everybody this year from the freshman class. I'm wondering, this, this guy could go in and make plays right away. Not trying to put anything on him, but that's how excited you get about a guy like this. Well, you never know, and that's the great thing about college football is, is you have to show up and that's show right. up. And, that's and, right. And, and, you, and you got at least three games yeah, to show it. And you, you get to have a little bit of input into that, uh, actually all the input. Uh, so um, it'll be exciting to see him here um, with, with that kind of size and ability. I mean, uh, in, in college football now, and all of football now, the interior defensive linemen, it's just so important to have good players there. When you have, when you have guys that are considered uh, the, the, some of the best, really good players in that interior defensive line, it makes a big difference all throughout your football program. And we know how big the outside linebacker position has been in this defense and can be, and so Sam Anelli comes in from Florida, another great get for Kentucky, and again, a guy who could really make a name for himself here before he's finished. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean if you if you you know if you if you're a guy like Anelli and you, you you're looking at a program and you look at what Mark Stoops and his staff and, and Brad White, what these guys have done with outside linebackers and the success that they've had and, and guys going on and playing, it has to be appealing to you. You know, I, I think if you're a guy that plays in that, that type of position, you know, Kentucky has to be one of the top destinations because of what they've done with those players. But you know, you're looking at a guy that's six four two fifty coming out of high school. I mean that's Six four two fifty is is if if that's where he was at you know all throughout his college career that'd be pretty doggone good and you would take that big right. size but that's him coming out of high school and uh, in the program here when he gets in here and they get him in the in the nutrition program they get him in the development program from a strength of program and agility um, you know that's a guy that's you got a great foundation to build off of and and it'll be exciting to see him play the guy who led the league in passing you like offense but you also know defense wins championships in Kentucky chasing among other teams Georgia you're right. very familiar with Kirby Smart great yep. defensive mind so with Kentucky bringing in defensive players like this and building uh, you know you, you've got to love the future right now well you do and as, and as a as a quarterback you know guys defensive linemen that were strong in the interior they made things diff they made things difficult on multiple levels number one they, they could shut down the run game yep. which which makes it a uh, well we're going to stand back here and pass the whole time and that's not a great idea in the sec or at least it can be difficult uh but then the other part of it is is when you have outside rushers that can really put pressure on you and if you talk about the sec that's what you're talking about mm -hmm. Uh, that's the that's the dominant factor I think that the SEC has is, is in the lines and particularly on defense, they've got those big guys in the middle of the defensive line that are just the war daddies. The, the war daddies <laughs> that that they're not they're not only not giving up ground, right. they're taking up ground and getting in your back so right. they can pressure you from the middle of the field. As a quarterback, that's really difficult to get that pressure in the middle of the field. And then you've got these big, athletic, long, fast twitch guys on the outside that can get to you. You know that's the SEC. Yeah. That describes the SEC and. Um, you know, Kentucky's program is 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 headed in the right direction. It's headed in the, in the, in the up direction, um, and I, you know, we're here. And this is another statement to say, you know, we're here. As our friend Freddie Maggard loves to say, they're fishing in the right waters, getting recruits like this. Well, you heard Brad White chat with us. He's going to go next level right now with Jeremy Jarman, Double J's. I'm sitting here with uh, defense coordinator Brad White. Coach, thanks for uh, joining us. Absolutely, thank you. So. Talk to us. You finished your first full season as defense coordinator. Talk to us kind of about, you know, some of those experiences. 
No, it's a it's a learning curve uh, for everybody. You know, it, a lot of people talked about, oh, you're going to have change out, you know, seven starters on defense. How are you going to be able to manage that? Uh, well, it was really more like eight because you know Coach House left, and so I was right. kind of a new starter. And and I said in our very first meeting uh, before Toledo, the night before the game, I said, raise your hand if you're a new starter, and all these hands go up. And I raised my hand too. I said, I'm right with you. And I said, but the best thing is, is that we're going to all play together and we're going to play for each other. And uh, the guys really did that. And we grew, you know, we grew as a defense. I grew, you know, as a play caller. Uh, the staff did an unbelievable job. Um, so really pleased with how we finished the season. You know, we talked about we want to incrementally get better each right. week. And I thought we did. And right. I thought we were playing uh, some of our best football yeah. at the end of the season. And we need to continue that into into the bowl. More expectation was put this season on uh, on the on the interior and also the outside linebackers in terms of being able to replace All-American consensus, All-American Josh Allen. If I would have told you at the beginning of the season that, that Calvin Taylor and uh, Boogie Watson were going to finish this, the, the sack leading duo, what would you have said to that? I would have said there was a chance. You know, we 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 talked about that it was going to have to be more of a team effort. It was going to have to be a duo or a trio, you know, to replace the production that Josh had. You know, we, we Josh Allen's come around only so often. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and that kind of production by a single individual comes around only so often. Right. Uh, but we knew that, hey, we were going to do some things that allow different people to show up and, and different people to be highlighted. Uh, was really pleasantly surprised uh, with Calvin's development, um, but he was he was really consistent yes, as a was. junior and really showed up in the run game as a junior consistency and had a, had a couple of sacks and pressures uh, there, but then really took that next step, uh, you know, as a senior this year. Uh, and then when you have an interior and an exterior rusher, good things happen because mm -hmm. the interior pocket push keeps the quarterback back and it'll put him to an outside rusher. And a good outside rusher will push a quarterback down the pocket to a good interior push. And so they really worked well in tandem together. I have a feeling that uh, a young man out of Deerfield Beach, huh. uh, Florida, is going to be one of the next great pass rushers here. You went down to Florida and you found Sam Manelli. Hey. Uh, you picked out some plays here that I'm going to play. Yep. Talk to me about Sam and uh, the recruitment of him. The, the first thing that you'll notice about Sam is just look at his length. And, and he's a big body with twitch and length. You, in this league, in the SEC, the long tackles, the big tackles you'll go against, uh, I know Coach Larman's already sat in this seat and guys that we're bringing in, those are the kind of bodies that you're going to have to face. Yes, yeah, Larman said that your guys don't have a chance against the guys that, that he's brought in. Well, I don't know if he's seen this <laughs> video. Um, but you watch Sam here that to be 6'4 plus, to be 245 pounds plus, to have the ability uh, to stutter off the ball here, you know, what I'd term a hop out, mm. um, you know, he's able to, to inside jab. Here he's going with his inside move. And the thing that I love more than just the physical tools no of, false step, of Sam just... is his mental. He's, he's a football guy. He, he's a sponge. He wants to learn. He asks great questions. Every time we talk on the phone, you know, it's, you know, we've got some kind of football related, hey, how could I use my hands here better? Mm. Hey, how can I set an edge better here? And uh, so he's going to really blossom in our system. You just look at the size, yeah. the length. You know, length is key. People forget about Josh Allen, how long he was. Right. You know, he was 6'5". He had long arms. He was 33-plus inch arms. And Sam, he's about an inch shorter than Josh. You know, they you know, they stood next to each other in a picture one time he was on campus and Josh had come back and you see him standing next to each other. But his physical development right now, I mean he's two hundred and forty five pounds right now. Right now. And Josh was what about I think it was like two ten coming yeah, in. Yeah, two ten, maybe even less than that coming right. in. Um, and so he's he's already 
physically developed and he'll get even more physically developed you know when he gets with coach ed uh, just really excited to get him in the mix and you know he's a he's one that's going to come in january so he gets the benefit of spring ball mm -hmm. um you know you keep adding these guys to the mix that's what the front seven supposed to look like absolutely yeah i mean you look at the guys that that are on the board that you know today a really exciting day for me as a, as a coordinator you see the size that we're bringing in on defense you know from the front end you know with uh, Trayvon and Justin Rogers, you know, to Sam on the outside, to Dierick on the inside backer, to the back end, you know, with Andrew and Carrington and Ricky. I mean, we're we're big and we're long and we're physical, and that's what you have to be in this league. And I think that's what's really shown up over these last two years, specifically on defense, is how physically imposing. We are. People look out there and you know, we get phone calls from friends in the coaching profession. People, you know, we all talk to each other. We say, man, we turn on your film. Well, you guys are What's going big. on? Yeah. You guys are big when we when we watch the crossover film. And that's that's where we want to stay in when we're recruiting. And that's what we're looking for. And they're all football guys, too. They love ball. They want to talk ball. They so just I'm excited. It's it's I was <laughs> telling I was telling the guys yesterday when I was talking to them on the phone. I said, everybody waits for December 24th. That's their Christmas Eve. I said, December 17th. I, a week before is mine. Right. You know, because yesterday was Christmas Eve, and then today's like Christmas. I was joined here today by uh, defense coordinator Brad White. Coach, congrats on a good first year uh, with that defense coordinator head on. I look forward to seeing you in Charlotte here in a few days. Uh, good luck in that bowl prep against Virginia Tech, and uh, look forward to catching up with you soon. Absolutely. Thanks so much. All right, we're going to send it over to Christy now, see what update she has for us. All right, JJ, he said it feels like Christmas. We've been saying that. It does have such a vibe in this room. We're in the war room um, inside Kroger Field and where there will be thousands of fans <laughs> cheering for these guys sooner rather than later. Um, but it does have a, a really cool feel. It does, and in fact, the lights went out just a minute ago. I think that was an <laughs> omen that, that that's how good this class is. Yeah. They're, they're lights out. Yeah. So, so we've got some more people uh, tweeting yeah. in to us uh, with the hashtag Vision2020. You can do the same. Tony Brown, a guy you're familiar hey, with. Hey, listen, this guy used to be the weatherman at WYMT in go. Hazard, Kentucky. We know we used to call him Downtown Tony Brown. So, yeah, he's tweeting at us with uh, the Force is Strong with UK. I don't know, is that Baby Yoda? I'm not a Star Wars. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, let's so go I'm, with that. All right, sure, so he says pumped. he's he's pumped not only for this day, but he's pumped for the Belk Bowl yeah. uh, coming up in a few weeks uh, against Virginia Tech. And then even more excited for next season, no doubt about that. And then one coming in from Jeffrey Hibbs says, congratulations to Coach Stoops and the other coaches on a great National Signing Day. Keep that big blue express train rolling and welcome to all the new members uh, to the BBN family. So uh, yeah, just a, these tweets are great. We love them. And really what we're finding is no one's getting any work done today. Yes, and that's no okay. Working. That's okay because this is most important. So if your boss or your teacher in, in Emma's case, who came up earlier, yeah. uh, comes up to you, just tell them you're learning something very valuable that will benefit you and your fandom in the future. And so no that's doubt. that's what we're doing today. And, yeah. and we're going to talk about another guy who whose letter came in just a little bit ago, that's another right. guy from the state of Kentucky. Yeah, that's right. So now we're, as we're looking at the big board, just to refresh you and remind you, we've got 18 guys in now. Um, so let's go back to number 16 up here, Isaiah Cummings. Uh, this guy, wide receiver out of Louisville coming to the University of Kentucky. I will tell you this. I saw Isaiah play in the male manual rivalry um, at the end of the season. And this kid, uh, you know, he's coached at one of the best programs in the, the yes. state of Kentucky. His high school coach, Chris Wolf, tells me he is going to be a great SEC wide receiver. And if you watch football in the state of Kentucky at the high school level, you know about that program. Mayo has talent. They have tradition. And Isaiah Cummings is the next guy to come out of that program. He was the Class 6A Player of the Year. Christy, when you're talking about him as wide receiver, you're talking about a kid with great size. Six foot three, uh, he's a guy who can go up at the high point and get the ball, and I think that's going to be very valuable for this football program. But what's also exciting to me is he grew up a Louisville fan. He did. I mean, this kid grew up wearing red. Yes. And, in fact, his dad works at the University of Louisville. <laughs> And I don't know if you uh, if you remember, but uh, Kentucky football's had some success against the Cardinals recent years, Indeed. and Isaiah has certainly seen some of that as and, and 
He just wants to be a part of the blue and white. You love being able to steal a kid out of uh, the city of Louisville. No question about that. So uh, this guy, of course, turning down some big offers. Um, and as we mentioned, I think something that will be very interesting with him with that size that you talk about is his blocking ability. He is an excellent blocker. So we'll hear what Michael Smith has to say about him in that capacity as he's over with Jeremy Jarman. Wide receiver coach Mike Smith back with us here in the studio. Uh, obviously, we just heard the good news there about Isaiah Cummings out of Louisville Mail. Uh, we got a few clips here that you picked out to kind of show the fans, show us uh, about him and why he is the uh, the 6A player of the year in the state of Kentucky. Yeah, you see Isaiah here in the slot. You know, he's a, he's a guy that probably most resembles in this recruiting class Ahmad Wagner. Mm. Uh, you know, here, here he you see him adjusting to the oh, ball yeah. right there. Another guy that's smooth coming off the ball, but shows great job tracking it and making the play. This play right here probably gets you most excited. Watch. They, they designate they three guys to stop him. This is the last play of a game, and he fights, and this shows the dog mentality That's that he incredible. has to go make a play, which is very exciting for me and for our staff because these are the type of guys you want on your football team, guys that won't be denied. I'm looking at the quarterback here. Quarterback's not looking for anybody else right. but Isaiah. <laughs> It doesn't matter what's happening to Isaiah right now. Right. <laughs> you can't even see Isaiah. Well, that's why you're the 6A player of the year right there, because you make plays like that. That is that is incredible. But really excited for this guy, man. I, You know, I, Coach Merrill did a great job, you know, getting in on this cat. And uh, this is another guy that we really went hard after, and he did. He was another guy that, you know, once he committed, he put his 10 toes in the ground and, and stayed firm. Uh, but a kid that has a great demeanor as far as his approach. Uh, really quiet off the field, but the thing that gets you exciting, just like you just saw right there. You can't coach that. When you, when he's playing, he's, he's, he's a different man. Yeah. He's a different man, and, and that's, that's something that I look forward to working with. That says a lot about him in that situation, to go to him in that situation, but also for the quarterback, no matter what the coverage looked like, the quarterback put the ball up to him and he, he wouldn't be denied. Right, and that's something I think he's earned. You know, he's earned that through the trust of his coaches and the trust of his teammates there at Mill, and, and that's something that we hope to continue to develop here, you know, to, to have that trust that when we need to make a play, he's the guy we want to go to. This is exciting. I can't wait to see his development under you, Coach. We're gonna, really let you, we're gonna let you get out of here. We're gonna kick it over to Coach Clean Scale and Dick Gabriel over there, see what else they have in store for us. Thank you again, Poppy. Yeah, thanks Appreciate for coming back on. <laughs> All right, Jeremy, thank you so much. And this is, of course, Steve Clean Scale. You met him earlier and you, you were going pretty deep with Mr. Jarman, but big picture today. You're smiling, aren't I'm you? Smiling, yeah. <laughs> Dan Bres Dan Bresowitz does a great job getting on my nerves, but <laughs> I understand that. Yeah. Uh, but tell me about the turnover. You you know, you, you had so much from last year. You have a little bit, but you're bringing in some new faces, new talent. How yeah. excited are you about that? Well, you know, I'm very excited. We uh, we did a pretty good job of just kind of getting the guys that we have now understanding what, what our goal was this year and, and uh, you know, being humble but also being hungry. You know, we have something to prove, you know, kind of a, a chip on our shoulder in this year's class. Um, still got a couple guys with some something to prove, but you know, try to find a couple guys that are a little bit more versatile. Just about everybody in this class plays both positions, and um, they have the skill set to play corner, safety, nickel. Um, great range, good speed. That's been the big thing of the last two classes is just getting some guys in here that can run. You know, and and we see that you know there, sometimes technique is great, but you got to be able to run with these guys in our conference. So. Um, but just the big picture part of it, you know, just continue to manage the room and bring in guys that can contribute or force the guys in front of them to do better or replace them. Well, we were talking earlier about uh, playing the defensive back position. It requires so much athleticism and, and more and more it's requiring more size. And so like used to, you could get one or the other. And now you're finding guys that are, you're getting both. Right. And you're seeing it show up today. Yeah, you, you have to get both. You know, you, you can't get a tall guy that can't run. You can't get a little guy that can only run, but he can't match up with the six five receiver. So you kind of got to find those guys that are right there in the midst. And, you know, again, we have some pretty good examples of that, of what to look for. So we know how to go hunt them now, you know, and, uh, you know, the next two classes, just looking at it, there's not a lot of long players out there. So the ones that we got this year is actually pretty good, pretty exceptional because there wasn't as many tall athletic corners and safeties out there. Um, so we, that's kind of the trend. You got to do that with those big receivers and, and uh, we got to continue that. 
Last year you brought in a junior college player, Brandon Eccles, yes, sir. And, and he was sort of an atypical guy in that some JUCOs, as you well know, take a little while to adjust to this level of football. He literally hit the ground running and helped you so much. How much is that a help for you, Coach, from the transition between last year's team and this coming season's team? Well, it, it's, a, it's a big help because you got guys who are still, he's still learning. Right. You know, and they see that, hey, he bought into the system, he bought into the coaching, he took the medicine. And so it's easier for those guys to do it. You know, and, and as a defensive back, it's all about if you show them, they can do it. So if they see somebody else being successful, doing what we ask them to do, they're going to follow suit. So, but, you know, and, and Brand is another one, the kind of the trend we were just talking about. A lot of guys we bring in now play both sides of the ball. Right. You know, or they were receivers converted to DB, and um, and that's kind of most of them don't have a whole lot of experience playing DB. So it's been really good to kind of mold them and, and get them to how you want them to perform. You you, you just talked about success and, and them watching other people have success. Talk about the guys that left here last year and the success that they had not only here but going to the next level, which is with the dreams and goals of a lot of these young guys. When they see that, what it means to them when you go sit in their homes. Oh, well, you know, it's, I can't, every time I go on a home visit, I, I talk about all five of those guys that played for me last year. <laughs> they all were different players. They all were different type of people, all great men. You know, they're going to be successful in everything they do. Uh, and if they make it easy, you know, to show that the final product, you know, those guys graduating, playing in the NFL, taking care of their families, being able to sit down with a mom and dad and show them, hey, yeah. I coached these guys for three years, three, four years, and, uh, you know, and this was the result, you know, so it makes it a lot easier. Then you put on the TV, you're in, you're in there talking to somebody, you see Lonnie Johnson or Mike Edwards making the play yeah. on, on the TV screen, that, that makes it a whole lot easier, too. Yeah. What do you look for in today's SEC defensive back? Obviously, you need more length. I know Mark Stoops put that on Vince Merrill six years ago. He said, Vince said he came in him off, so we got to get longer. Right. Uh, but everybody wants that guy. Everybody wants the kid who can run, like Dusty said, and be tall and be long and all that stuff. So it's kind of made your job a little more challenging, hasn't it? Yeah, you know, but like I said, a lot of the guys are start those taller receivers that are 6'1", 6'2", feeling like, hey, you know what, I can be an average receiver or I can be yeah. an elite corner. Oh, yeah. They're they're making that transition. You know, corner is not the position that you just throw a guy out there now. Now it's like that's the first pick. You know, these guys they want to play corner before they play receiver because they're six one, six two, and they know that they got a higher likelihood of getting drafted in the earlier rounds. That's an interesting point because so many teams now are running the nickel and the dime packages right. that everybody needs more DBs that are starter quality, right. uh, and then they're, so there's less of them out there because everybody's fighting <laughs> That's for them. That's right. Go we'll get them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying. So, but uh, like I said, and then talking about Coach Stoops with those guys helps all the all the first round draft pick DB. I mean, he's coached the, some of the best safeties and corners that, that yeah. will ever play the game. Yeah. And so that makes it, uh, you know, a lot easier too. Them knowing that we work together in the secondary. Coach, thanks for dropping by. Congratulations appreciate it. Thank you. on another good day. Good luck in the bowl game. I appreciate it. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Back to Christy and Lee K. All right. So some more of your tweets coming in using the hashtag Vision2020. Uh, a UK hoops fan says, "Hey, Coach Stoops, I've got some eligibility left and ready to run through a wall." Well, listen, I could probably run through the wall that, <laughs> that uh, Schlarman's putting up here. Uh, but Just not this one. We're using it right now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but uh, National Signing Day got him fired up. Us too, as well. So yes. Good and uh, Richard says, uh, "UK football, UK athletics. I work the night shift. Should be sleeping too." Maybe now that some of these big names like Justin Rogers have signed, I can now fall asleep. <laughs> you so. sleep soundly knowing a guy like that's come in, right? Yeah, that was a yes. good get. And we're going to talk about him now. So let's break down a couple of these uh, linemen that have come in. Let's go back to uh, uh, Trayvon Ribka, 6'4", 300 pounds out of Dixon County High School in Tennessee. Uh, rivals list him as a four star and the 10th ranked player out of Tennessee, a consensus top 50 defensive tackle. Yeah, a jumbo guy. I mean, he is a big kid, called himself a raw player in a recruiting video that I watched and said that he wanted to be coached. And how about that? When, you, awesome. when you've got a guy of this talent coming into your program and he says, hey, I want to be coached because I know I can be better. That says something. The number 10 overall recruit in or out of the state of Tennessee. So uh, Ripka is uh, definitely uh, 
a very talented young player that uh, can, can really pay dividends for the Wildcats football program on defense in the future. I think that talks about his maturity as well, right? When you want yes. to be coached, you're obviously saying that you're coachable, that you're going to take the coaching, and you know really what's at stake when you come here. And if you will take the coaching, we've seen the player development. We've seen what's happened here. And think about this, defensive end. I mean, you think back to Josh Allen, and he's always going to be the guy that a lot of people talk about when you talk about player development sure. at this school. He came in as rated a two-star. So whether uh, these players that are coming in today are rated a, a three-star, a four-star, a five-star, like Justin Rogers, who we're going to speak about in just a minute, it's all about what you do after you arrive on campus. That's the right. stars are cool. I yeah. mean, it's cool to come in and say, hey, look at all these stars beside my name. But a guy like Josh Allen can come in and develop into a top 10 pick in the draft with two stars by his name. Yes. And uh, so the development thing is certainly big, and, and Ribka is a guy who can certainly develop in that same direction. You will have all the tools. You will have everything you need here at the University of Kentucky to be successful. So to your point, it's what do you what do you want to do? What do you want to put into it to make it what you want? You've got the facilities. You've got the coaching staff. You've got the fan base. You've got the, uh, nutrition, the weight room. You name yes. it, you've got it here. So really, it's, uh, it's up to you as a player. So we'll see what happens. And like I said, this next guy, Justin Rogers, He's not lacking in any stars. My goodness. In fact, he's got all the stars you can have. All right, so how about this? How about we all just breathe a big sigh of relief that this kid came in. We're talking about a 6'3", 315-pound guy out of Oak Park, uh, Michigan. Same high school as Marquand McCall, an elite five-star prospect. One of the best, best interior linemen uh, in prospects in the country. Yeah, I wrote down two words when talking about Justin Rogers, and that is size and power. And when you're talking about a defensive lineman, those are two good words to have beside your name. Uh, now, this is a guy, you know, Kentucky recruits these players from a young age, some of them a couple of years. This kid has been recruited by the UK staff since he was in the eighth grade. How about that? Think about that. Yeah. He, was, he was recruited by this, this staff in eighth grade. They've been after him, and today is the day that he and the coaching staff can officially call him a Kentucky Wildcat. That is big. 22 tackles for loss, seven sacks, three forced fumbles this past year as a senior, number one player out of the state of Michigan, choosing to be a Wildcat. That has to feel like a lifetime, doesn't it? If you started getting recruiting, recruited when you were in the eighth grade for both the staff and for Justin, to think about finally coming to this day where that has to seem like a lifetime ago. So much has happened for him since then. Yes, absolutely. And I just love the fact that, you know, Ohio has been. Uh, a great pipeline for this recruiting uh, for the staff. Yes. Ever since Coach Stoops got here. Yes. Now Michigan is becoming that other state. So they're going into Big Ten country and pulling those guys in and saying, hey, come play in the SEC. Come play at Kentucky. We've, there's also a guy from Ohio named Lynn Bowden who uh, turned out pretty well uh -huh. for the Wildcats yeah. as it's, well. It's all working out out of Ohio and Michigan, no doubt about that. So, all right, a guy who's going to get to coach this five star elite prospect is now hanging out with Jeremy Jarman. He has got Coach LeBlanc. Yeah, <clears throat> so I'm sitting here with defensive line coach Derek LeBlanc. Coach, thanks for coming and joining us today. Thank you, man. Thanks. So uh, obviously a big day for you. Before we jump into uh, jump into the D-line signees, uh, let's kind of acknowledge the guys that are going to be, uh, you know, leaving the program or you sure. know, graduating yeah. and moving on. Yeah. And uh, T.J. Carter, Phil Hoskins, and uh, my man Calvin Taylor. Right. Well, I tell you what, those three guys have done a great job for this program. They've done a great job being being leaders in the room. And uh, pretty productive on the field as well. You right. Know? And uh, we're going to miss those three guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, what does it say about, uh, you know, this unit? You know, I had a chance to talk with Coach White and just talking about the presence that, uh, that, that Calvin Taylor provided, uh, the, the continuity. We saw him kind of emerge last season. And uh, I mean, just, a, just basically a work in progress to basically finish this season at the top of the leaderboard, former walk on. You know, under your guidance, under your teaching, we watched him essentially morph himself into a game changer in the best football conference in America. Sure. Well, I think hats on, hats off to Calvin. He's done a great job of, of being coachable and, and, and developing himself into a pretty good player. And, and he brought the work ethic to the field. You know, um, you can't coach length. Right. Obviously, he's the tallest guy on the field. You can't miss him. And I think that's, he's used that to his advantage. He's done a great job of, of using technique and using those long arms he's got. And he's been pretty good up front, especially from an interior defensive lineman. Yeah. So, you know, with the departure of those guys, it's created some opportunities. And we are able to go down to Dixon, uh, Tennessee, where we were able to find uh, Trayvon Ripka. Right. Uh, we had to go a little ways. Yeah, That's a little, right. a little yeah. bit. That's we were right. able to get him out of the volunteer state. And yeah. uh, I didn't have any problem doing that. He didn't either, right. apparently. I, so, yeah, uh, no doubt. 
you know, shout out to him. So let's talk a little bit about him, Coach. Well, I tell you, first of all, great kid. He's got a great family. Uh, the kid's a, a really humble, hardworking kid uh, with a lot Ooh. of, and I hate to use the term, but a lot of raw talent. He's got a lot of ability where uh, he can run, he's lengthy, uh, he's very athletic, uh, and the more football he learns, the better football player he's gonna be. Powerful lower body. Yes, real thick lower body. Uh, really, I think he'd be a really dynamic player for us uh, in the years to come. Absolutely. I mean, you watch him here with the hands. Oh yeah. He's already got a foundation of using good hands and stabbing, uh, getting separation. I mean, I think the kid's got a lot of upside, and uh, the sky's the limit for this kid. Possibly being one of those interior linemen, four or five technique, kind yeah. of a similar uh, situation as uh, TJ and Cal. Sure, as TJ and Cal, he'll be that guy that plays inside a little bit with the ability to play outside in the edge and give us some pressure on the edge to get to that quarterback. Sounds good. So yeah. uh, back up in Oak Park, Michigan, uh, we went up and got one of the teammates, a yeah. big uh, Marquand McCall. Yeah, we're keeping uh, it in the family, man. <laughs> keeping keep it, it in the family. Keep it uh, coming. Justin Rogers, one of the top overall defensive linemen in America. Talk to us yeah. a little bit about Justin. I tell you what, he's just as good as both on both sides of the ball. He's, he's as physical as it gets. He's that brute guy that's going to bring some physicality to our defense. This is him right here. Yeah, at, he's at, 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 left, at right tackle over here, uh, being physical. Watch him, watch him slam this guy. Oh. I know it's a size oh. matchup, obviously. You know, but he's uh, <laughs> he's he's bring he brings that kind of mentality to our defense, man. He's going to be a pleasure to have. You see him here at at at, um, at defensive end here. Right. Great eye discipline. Does a good job of squeezing the block, playing with disciplined hands. Pad level. You know, good pad level. Kid's able to bend, man. He's got great knee bend. You know, he's a big, powerful, thick guy. And he's going to be physical as all get out when he gets here. Mm. Really good job there being patient. We were talking about that a little bit earlier. Right, you know, a yeah. lot of, you know, high school kids, you know, you see that block, it, you know, kind of like a, you know, infl make you want to kind of chase it, get up the field. Sure. He's just patient. Look at the lower body there. No, he's what they look like now. He's oh, what yeah. They look like. He's going to be a pleasure to coach. This is awesome. This is awesome. Coach, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, look forward to seeing you in a few days as yeah. you guys get ready to uh, go to Charlotte and uh, beat Virginia Tech. I know you guys are looking forward to getting out. They got a little, quarterback's got a little wiggle to him, so I That's know right. you guys going right. to be focused on uh, them run and pass lanes. So, sure. Uh, well, we got to do a good job preparing. Right. 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 So, we appreciate Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thanks yep. for having me. Yep, we're going to kick it back it. over, uh, get ready to start wrapping up some of this coverage. Thank you, Mr. Jarman. And we have talked to coaches and players about this guy now, Lynn Bowden. Joined. It was all good. Yeah. It was all good. He joins us now. Uh, but it wasn't that long ago your name was coming up on one of these sheets. What do you remember about signing day when you came to Kentucky? Uh, you know, it was just one of the best moments of my life. Something just, you know, it changed, it just changed me as a as a person in whole. You know, um, I was excited. You know, I knew for a long time I was going to come here. You know, I was probably here every other week when I was a recruit. And um, you know, just just being able to come here and this place was amazing to me. You know, the fans, the coaches, when I was a recruit, and still to this day, they're still amazing to me. 18 names on the board, 18 different reasons. What was your chief reason for coming here? You know, um, I just wanted to change Kentucky. You know, um, I had, you know, bigger offers, you know. People, most people look at, like, if you got these big schools, you want to go to the big schools and fit in. Me, I wanted to stand out, you know. I just wanted to, wanted to go help a program for me and build it from the bottom up. He's done that, hasn't he? Oh, he absolutely has. And, <laughs> and in this year, you've kind of been forced into a unique position. But, but to me, Lynn, you're a guy that you were given an opportunity and you've made the most of it. Yeah. And you're continuing to make the most of it. What would you tell, what would your advice be if you could, you know, all these young guys coming in about, hey, this is your opportunity to make the most of it. What would you say to them? Um, well, obviously, they see, they see how, how the season went last season, you know. Um, so they understand that we can be a winning team, you know. Here they they're going to develop you as a young man and as a football player. You know they're going to help you you get where you want to be. And um, these these coaches here and the people around here they they take care of their, uh, these kids like like their family. So just come in here and work hard and you you get to where you want to be. It's funny you use that word family. I've heard coaches who come to work here use that word. Players who have signed here, such as yourself. Uh, and, and that's a real thing. You can't fake that, can you? And now that you're a family man, how much more does that mean to you? Uh, it means more. 
with me, uh, you know, communication and trust goes a long way. So, you know, just me being able to communicate with these guys and, and trust them, you know, it was it was easy for me to make my decision to come here. And I think that's that's why you got 18 people up there right now. You know, mm -hmm. uh, this this what in Jan this December I signed in February I think <laughs> a couple of years ago. So, you know, with that, you know, these, these kids trust everyone in here. So. Everybody we've talked to talks about the hard work and the discipline and the standards that are required to be a player here and, and in this program. But at the same time, you guys are having a lot of fun. And I think if there's one player that shows it more than anybody else, it'd be you out on the field. You look like you're just having fun all the time. And, um, you know, what's it what's it been like to you know you're playing receiver and all of a sudden now you're you're back there playing quarterback. It's talk to us about the fun you're having right now. Um, everything I do fun, you know, from the wins and losses here. You know, we try to make the best of it. You know, obviously, no one wake up and want to lose. And um, you know, coach, the coaches here, they make it fun, the, the most fun you can have. You know, uh, I think Coach Stoop was a little lenient on us this year, and you know, just letting us do a couple of things. And you know, he, but he, he, he seen an ultimate goal that if, if we're having fun and not just on strict lockdown, you know, we're going to be able to produce. So you don't want to be on 24 and three and, and just be locked down all day. And, you know, not having fun. You know, from us having fun, it brings juice to us and, and, and the fans. So, Eddie Grant sat right here and talked to us about how he has evolved as a play caller, as a coordinator, as a coach. And he said, you guys basically evolved together mm -hmm. within this offense. Tell us a little bit about that process. He said, you would come to the sidelines after an eight yard gain and say, I missed that. Next time at the 23 yard gain. Yeah. What was that like? No. Um, Coach Grant, you know, he's, he's, he put his trust in me, you know, I put my trust in him and, um, you know, we, we, we never really looked back, you know, once once things got to kicking, you know, they, they put another a whole, basically a whole playbook in just to go around me, you know, and, you know, it was for the better, but, you know, me and Coach Grant, we was like, like me and Terry's uh, bond, peanut butter and jelly, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so it was, without, it was like, a, like a baseball hit, you can't hit it without the bat. So. Sounds good to me. Well, you got one more game. Yes, sir. Good luck in the bowl. I Thanks for joining it. us. It's been a privilege covering you. I appreciate, appreciate y'all covering me and having me here. Best so. of luck in the future. I thank you. Thank you yes, so sir. much. Going to send it back to Christy and Lee Kay to close things out on a big day for the Big Blue Nation. I can't wait to buy myself a Lynn Bowden jersey yes. for his NFL team wherever he lands. We didn't find out. Was he the peanut butter or the jelly? I didn't oh, find out if he that's was. That's a good question. Yeah. Probably the... Uh, oh, so Dick says uh, the peanut butter because he's silky smooth. Because he's smooth. That makes yeah, sense. silky smooth. I like that. Yeah, I before like that. we leave, we have some more tweets here. This one from the better half of the Neely family. <laughs> uh, Terry Neely says, great day to be a wildcat. Go Cats. I could not agree with her more. Indeed it is, fine lady. No doubt about that. I love this. So Nicole Turner says, I'm in HR. I'm pretty sure this is against policy <laughs> to be watching, uh, but I'm not going to uh, say anything. Wait, yeah, listen, mum's the word on that one. Go Cats. Can't wait. Special class mixing with some already special guys. Speaking of already special guys, one of them was tweeting. DeAndre Square says, I think this 2020 class could be really special. So, Lee Kay, I don't think it can be understated what the current group of Wildcats can do and the role they can play in bringing in a class just like this. This is great. When you're willing to welcome these guys in and know that they're going to push you for playing time, but this is pretty special. Yes, and they play a huge role in the development of those young players. Yeah. In some cases, more than even the coaches and their position coaches because they've been there. They've been on this day. They know what it's like to sign their letter of intent, and they now know what it's like to be a part of this program. So good for DeAndre Square to put out that tweet, and he's excited, just like I'm sure many of his teammates are as well. So 18 names came in. We saw them on the big board. Your overall thoughts on the morning? I mean, the, the staff addressed many of the needs that they, they needed. I mean, defensive line, offensive line, I mean, those were some of the biggest needs. They got some quarterbacks. We saw this year why you should have – some good bodies in that quarterback room. You got a pair of them and Bo Allen and Joey Gatewood. I really like this class from top to bottom and it seems like they are, uh, they're not done. That's but, right. But, but they're making their way toward one of the best recruiting classes that they've ever signed at Kentucky and that is something special. To your point, our show is ending, but that does not mean signing day is ending. It goes on for today and then until Friday. So it goes until the 20th. So be sure to keep watching social media. Watch Facebook. Watch Twitter. You'll see all of those names as they come in. You're going to know all about those guys. Don't forget the Belk Bowl. I'll see you guys in Charlotte. I'll that's be down right. there with bells on. I can't wait. So many people behind the scenes. You guys have no idea the amount of work that's gone into this. 
So we want to say a big thank you to all of them. We want to say thank you to you for watching. We can't wait to see these guys on the field very, very soon. Go Cats.